tea. Rich tea. Hello and welcome to the Saladcast on Sunday the 10th of April 2011. I'm your host, Daniel Francis John Train. <laughs> Joining me today, Zachary Brown Burgess. Oh, you gave away my secrets. <laughs> no. And Robert Can't Adam Kemp. Rich tea. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that. You can't give away my secrets. No one knows what the second B stands for. How is that a secret? It's because it's my username in IRC is ZBV, and I never told anyone what the middle one... Because obviously you can see Zachary Vegas, because that's my Hotmail address. I never told anyone what the second B stood for. It's like, ooh, you for real. why do they care? They don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Am I going to have to censor this out with... Again. No, Brown is staying in there. I've said it twice now. What's wrong with that? It was funny. It's his enigma. <laughs> I don't know if it's a mystery, because you could work it out from your family tree, can't you? Or something, because isn't it... Because obviously people on the internet name? are going to be able to find that out from just my name. Well, that, is, it, live, it, that is it, isn't it? Yes. Right. But then that's supposedly a tradition, is it? But I never heard of that before. Do you know that one? Well, to hide right. your middle name. No, for your middle, <laughs> name to be your, your middle name to be your mother's maiden name. Well, I'd be Onslow, which I don't think would work too well. Yeah, I'd be I'd be Dan Bond Train. Actually, that's really cool. <laughs> My mother's name is Bond. <laughs> Dan Bond. So, that doesn't quite... Yeah, I suppose. Because apparently Ian Fleming cho- chose the name James Bond to be like the most boring name he could think of. Because he wanted a spy to be unassuming. But he won't succeed. Mm. As when he, when he wanted to come up with a flash name for a spy, he came up with Napoleon Soldo for, um, you know, uh, the man from Uncle. Napoleon Solo. Yeah. And his partner, Ilya. Han. Han? <laughs> it's Ilya Han the, Kuryakin, Solo. the Russian guy. <laughs> Ilya Kuryakin. Anyway, how are we doing? We've got. Two minutes done. <laughs> Two minutes done. Well, I'm just updating us on the time there. Eh? Well, that's how we're doing. Oh, man. It's been such a nice day. And over the past few days, it's been such nice weather. We went golfing. Yep. The Salad Cast has the uh, inaugural... Of this year. Of this year. Golf off. <laughs> on of a nine-hole Did you actually total course. up the scores yet? So. No. I forgot to. And then I left them in my car, so... Inconclusive. <laughs> I think I must have averaged about seven strokes on those par threes. <laughs> Standard. Yeah, we're, we're, we're great. We're really, really great. We we rock. But one thing we are a bit better at than golf is playing computer games mm. and talking about them. So let's move on to that, shall we? Unhinged gaming journalism. Indeed. That's our forte. Journalism. Oh, well, wait. There is going to be some today. Gasp. Yeah. Well, really? Zach's Revealing that later. Up to date. Oh, sort exciting. Of. Oh, we've got an exclusive on here on the Soundcast. No, it's not no. exclusive. Well... Relatively no. recent. That's, that's Exclusive right. between us. <laughs> <laughs> recent information. Okay, well, I'm going to ask the question of Robert Adam Kemp. What have you uh, been playing, man? Oh, there goes my no, un- I already said it. enigma. Oh, wait, okay. <laughs> I didn't realise you had a funny thing about hiding in middle name as well. No, I don't either. No. It's just... Adam's it's not funny. too bad. It's, it's just a name. What's wrong with Adam? Day. Exactly. What's no. wrong with brown? That's, like, really Because it's, it's a colour, not a name. <laughs> There's loads of people called Brown. Not as a middle name, though. Mm, I guess. Anyway. Brown. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you playing, man? Well, mostly, as per usual, some Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Redemption? <laughs> Redom. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, hmm. nowhere really. I'm just trying to think of something other to say than Red Jank Redemption. I just think that's great, but carry on. Red Redemption. Although, yeah, uh, speaking of, we'll st- go straight to the jank, and uh, uh, you already know about this, Dan, but I, I come across possibly the most irritating bit of jank so far. Not because it's game-breaking or because it's uh, anything, else, but because there's two fundamental moments in the game where there's some soundtrack. And it's like other than incidental music. And the game decided not to give them to me. <laughs> or it did. But like the second, the first bit of music I never got. So it never played it at all. Which was sucked. And then the second piece of music I got to hear one lyric. And then it faded out. <laughs> Admittedly, I was collecting herbs when it faded out. <laughs> I don't understand why you didn't get the first one when you go into Mexico. Yes, yeah, I never heard it. I did just you never not, heard it. Did you try and collect herbs or do something straight away when you got no, into I don't think Mexico? so. I don't think so. Hmm. It's mysterious. Because you get off the raft, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you, you do. Then there's a couple of horses waiting for and you, and then you just have to ride to a mission because there isn't much about. Yeah. And it's, uh, but you didn't get a song at all. It was 
deadly quiet. <laughs> Mysterious. Okay. And the second time... You're... It just sort of... Oh, I got... It was like uh, some music was playing, and it's like... Okay, I'm not entirely sure. You know, it started with like a what sounds like an incidental guitar riff, one that I maybe not have heard before, and it was like, "Ooh, herbs!" So I picked, <laughs> went for a herb, and then one of the lyrics just started, and it's like something like, "I don't know" or something, and then just goes, and it's like fades completely out. Right. That that was that that was great. <laughs> I, I waited for this, like what you voted for as the one of the great moments of the last year's gaming. I thought, it was. and I didn't get it. <laughs> Aww. That's a bit of a shame. Too busy collecting herbs. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, woolly blue curls. Oh, woolly blue curls. I need them for my mission thingy. I need my survivalist ranks. You do seem to have all kinds of problems with... Like, that happened when I watched you doing... You were doing, um, what's it called, bounty mission. And they timed out because... Not only did you pick up herbs, but you also found a random encounter on the way to the bounty Yeah, mission. and then in, in, in the process of doing the random encounter, the bounty just sort of went, Timed yeah, out. fuck it. Because that was quite long, because you had to fight those wolves. Yeah. Which I'd never done that one, like, where you have to put down bait. You have, like, a competition to find oh, yeah, yeah, hunting. Yeah, yeah. And you were, like, slashing them with a knife, because you were like, fuck it. <laughs> they disappeared, <laughs> didn't they? Because it's totally awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and you just stabbed them up. So that was quite funny. I now have to kill cougars for my next chance with to ask with a knife. Oh, God, that's fun. Oh, uh, with a knife? Yeah. No, I, can't I don't see enough cougars, really, to sort of plan for that occasion. Usually cougars are just sort of on you. They're quite hard to find. Yeah. And they're pretty fast. Don't yeah. They? I don't know. They're Sometimes cool. you hear them when you drive past them, you just yeah, hear yeah, them they're, they're kind of familiar, uh, kind of not recognisable sound, aren't they? Yeah. Kind of, and rather than the wolves that just sound like angry, fuzzy dogs. <laughs> yeah. These, uh, these actually sort of go... <laughs> they do, yeah. They sound quite... A bit jaguar really. But well, they are... Like a, a, a what they call big cat, sort of. Are cougars are they big cats? cats? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. They're not as big as a proper big cat, like a jaguar or a tiger or a lion or something. A jag. But they're the, they're the biggest big cats in America, aren't they? Or in North America. Jaguars are in South America. The problem is, right, when, you, when you're in the wild in Red Dead, they just sort of look a bit like most of the other sort of wildlife. So, you, like, from afar, they probably just look a bit like a coyote or or, or a fox. Yeah. And it's just like, whoa, is that a cougar? I don't know. Let's shoot it anyway. <laughs> well, usually if you're near a cougar, they do tend to go straight for you. <laughs> yeah, it's relatively rare to like find one just wandering about, not doing I anything. I was, I was up the mountain once and uh, um, killed, a, killed a wolf. And then while I was skinning it, immediately got killed by a wolf. <laughs> and it's like, where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> it was a very silent wolf. Normally they're barking like crazy as they, they come are. up to you. But this one just sort of went... No, <laughs> that was me, Dan. But as you discovered, the bears are pretty quiet. Bears are pretty quiet it's as well. Yeah, freaking nowhere. There was, there was one because in the mountains it's quite hon- high contrast visuals with the snow on the ground and yeah. the uh, and the black trees. And I was just, just walking up, walking up this thing, and all of a sudden there's this bear in my face. It's like, what the fuck? Where did he <laughs> come from? <laughs> terrifying. No, uh, he, he battered me once, and then I managed him. to shoot him while I was falling back. Well, yeah, well, not quite so stylish, but yeah, I got up and I was like, oi. Fuck off. <laughs> and he died. So I had him. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And we, we all ate bear for tea. You have um, to watch out there, because if you kill a bear, they tend, unlike in real life, there tend to be about two bears come along after to, like, avenge his death or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never seen that. I've only ever seen singular bears at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they do do that, so you have to watch out. <laughs> do do. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say, I, 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 now I've been playing West Elizabeth and things like that, I... As the last area in the game, maybe it's... I know it's supposed to perhaps sort of give you a bit more variety of the scenery and stuff. Yeah. But I did find the transition to the mountains a bit funny, because it doesn't feel like you've gone... No, it's not far, is it? Far enough. And then all of a sudden you've gone from what it looks like quite arid land to snow. It goes from the plains to the the mountain quite quick. It's well, kind the of... plains are quite high up when you think about it. They, they are. Yeah. Well, it's quite confusing because if you think of the geography of America, they've really squeezed it down because, mm. like, the plains are, like, obviously the... What's it called? The basket of America, the big mm. middle bit. And then the mountains are, like, Colorado, I think, or yeah. whatever, which are next to each other, but they've just squished everything yeah, in. Yeah, the transition's really sharp yeah. is the problem I have. But it's like, I think the game could have actually probably been better without it. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel... Without when you West stumble Elizabeth. upon it, yeah, it just doesn't feel quite right given the context. I mean, most of West Elizabeth is fine. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Blackwater because it's the least. It's the least interesting. Isn't yeah, Armadillo's a lot cooler than Blackwater. Yeah. Blackwater's supposed to be the big city, but it's not actually that 
interesting. I mean, it's no. good that you have the high roller casino bit and everything, a place for that and stuff. There's a casino? Oh, not casino, not the casino, the sorry. But yeah, yeah. An uh, area like, outside your hotel. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, you've got the... Which I lost a shit ton of money yeah, yeah. trying to play. Yeah, they're really hardcore there. This is one of the outfit challenges is to um, eliminate everyone from the poker table there. It's quite hard and to do. It's fucking harsh and it's like 200... Oh, I forget how much it is to... It's like a grand, I think, to anti in. Yeah, it and is. Uh, yeah, so I lost quite a lot of money there. Yeah. I, I, I must have spent hours just playing that poker game. Because it's quite fun if you just want to learn how to play Texas Yeah, poker. poker's alright, but I sucked at it really badly. Yes. On that high roller table, I really suck. So Not easy. Even, but... even with the elegant suit on. Um, and, the, uh, and the card cheating ability. Although I did get caught cheating once. Just when things were starting to go well, I thought, ooh, ooh, I could just cheat here. And then the cheat thing came up and disappeared pretty much immediately, saying, you got caught. And it's like, oh, no. it's like isn't there supposed to be a mini game attached to this cheating thing? But it just sort of went, hello, goodbye, you've been caught cheating, have a duel, you win, you don't get your money back. Oh, oh. fuck that shit. I haven't tried cheating. It's like, at least, if you, you at least if you like win at the duel or something, you should be able to steal, because all the money just seems to disappear, because the guy oh. you kill... Uh, because he catches you cheating, um, then just has like a couple of bucks on him rather than like proper All money. The money and it's yeah. like, well, where does it go? It goes nowhere. That's weird. House wins. So how do you cheat then? Um, um, you basically, while you're dealing, you can activate the cheat turn. You play a little sort of balance mini game, basically. Oh, uh, okay. And if you keep that in the good zone for long uh, for long enough, you'll take a card out of the, off the bottom of the deck, and right. that gets put up your sleeve or somewhere. And then when you've got a hand in there, you can when you're looking at your hand later on, you can cheat again to put that and replace one of the cards in your hand. So it's like it's still a little random, you know. It's not like it's it's still yeah. cheating, but it's not like crazy powerful cheating to right. make you win all the time. I see. Hmm, that's kind of cool. I but guess. It, it makes but sense yeah, to it, it, it's quite a risk to use. Right. Because obviously, if you get caught cheating and the game's over and you lose all your chips on the table, then it's yeah. And seemingly so does everyone else. <laughs> I guess they needed to put for West Elizabeth. They need well. They needed to put like a plains area in for it to be more westerny because it's all kind of the real low down southern well, like, still like, like the, spaghetti uh, western stuff. Oh yeah, I still it? think the area around Armadillo and Collar Springs and yeah, yeah, and, and all that is the most western bit of the game. And it's like it. It depends what riding kind of around. Western you're, 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 yeah, I know, what? but it's, it's what I associate with Western. Yeah, me so while too. I'm riding around those areas, I, I feel more attached to the game. It's you know, I found that probably the first half of the game <laughs> takes place in New Austin, and rightly so because it's the best feeling area in the entire place. Oh, I agree. West Elizabeth is almost too green, and as I say, the mountains I don't think fit that well. And it's uh, it is just variety and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think, but I, I don't think it was necessary. Maybe. Hmm. They could they could have thrown in some. I, I think the missions perhaps do start to get a little samey because they don't really do much other than other than the the, the vocals. They're mostly either ride here, shoot some dudes, ride yeah. shotgun, shoot some dudes, and it starts to lose its variety towards the end of the game. Yeah, they, it's they, the same they, in Grand Theft Auto. Really, it gets yeah. harder, but oh yeah, yeah, some of the fights were actually legitimately hard towards the end. Yeah, as, as opposed to just being having the odd cheap death. Which you get sort of yeah, around the Mexico right. area, yeah. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of times where that did happen, where I'd turn a corner, it would just be bang, bang, bang. Oh, I'm dead. Um, didn't see that all coming. If you think about it, West Liz was the only place where there are any Indians or even an Indian character, and it's a whole game about cowboys, no Indians, yeah. apart from that one guy. But it's like, well, in all of, well, I don't know. Are we can we can we talk about this in crazy detail? But yeah, most most of the gang you fight there are Indians, aren't they? And Mm. Like most of his boys. Yeah, but I'm just saying if they didn't do that area with the plains where the Indians live in real life or, mm. or did and still do on their reservations, but um, then it would just be... It would be like a spaghetti western like the Clint Eastern ones where there aren't any Indians, but there are lots of Mexicans. Egninga. <laughs> <laughs> Egninga. Yeah, exactly. So I guess they wanted to add that kind of more classic 50s western rather than the 60s westerns. I almost don't think the Mexicans were Mexican enough, if you know what I mean. There weren't enough <laughs> cliched Mexicans. They were, they, yeah. yeah. There's the odd few you meet as soon as you end up in Mexico that are proper cliched Mexicans. You're like, shit, yeah, this is this is getting real now. Yeah. And uh, uh, but, but then it all goes into sort of like the typical GTA larger than life characters that could have really been anywhere. They didn't, yeah. A lot of them didn't have to have been Mexican. And... I think it's generally more subtle than GTA in terms of even its characterization because yeah. GTA can be quite out there with people like 
what's his name, the the weightlifter guy, uh, Bruce. Oh, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's his um, highly evolved? What's his uh, you know uh, slogan or catchphrase? Probably bang. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> Just like boom. Be genetically different, baby. That's it. <laughs> it's awesome yeah there's no one quite that crazy no although Seth is pretty bad and Irish so, I, I, Irish is just goddamn annoying yeah anyway Reyes was alright he was quite funny yeah still turned out to be a bit of an asshole yeah of course you know, he, he's alright he's, he's, yeah. he's a bit more entertaining other than that fucking Louisa chick who just turns to be uh, to be quite irritating the whole time yeah she's a bit high and mighty isn't she yeah hmm but still, you've got quite far through. I mean, you've got yeah, that. I'm, I've yeah, pretty much got one mission left, haven't I? Or, no, you've yeah, got a few okay. um, with your family and stuff because you've got up to a point where you, and now you get and um, it's fairly easy ride to the end now. Okay, uh, you've just got a few nice missions, short ones, and then uh, and then there's the finale. I think. Yeah, I still haven't had any man bugs though. I'm <laughs> wondering if they are exclusively PS3. Glitches. I've never seen anything like that. No, where people turn into other things. I've seen. Oh, I had something while I was riding around town. I've, I've seen some great little moments where, um, I, while I was in this high stakes poker area, where I was just walking into, casually walking into the saloon, not running in to save time. No, I just thought, oh, right now I'm just going to make it look cool. And, but except the whole scene was ruined because to one side there was the poker table, and everyone was just standing around the poker table like this until I got close, and it was like. Boom! And they're all sitting <laughs> oh, <down. laughs> That's great. And it played the sound effect of them all sitting down all at the same time, so it was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And oh. there's been a couple of moments where I was uh, riding into Blackwater, and it obviously hadn't loaded everything in time. Oh, right. So yeah. I'm on the high street, and then all of a sudden the cart appears underneath yeah. my horse, and I get flung into the air for a bit. And it's just like... Boop. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get streaming problems. I don't know. So that was quite funny. It's pretty amazing that the whole... The tech, anyway, and just in general, in terms of loading stuff before you get there, just there's no loading pauses apart from when you come to. You missions. say that, but I suppose there aren't many. You know, when you think of some sort of crazy variety of things, this is all set in that kind of arid style wasteland, and so you can go yeah. for quite large distances with a lim- quite a limited texture set. That's probably you know, true. When, yeah. when you compare to how the tech was used for GTA 4, where there must be a mil- fuck ton of textures and a fuck ton of different models, and every building has to look slightly different, yeah. characteristic, that's true. Then that that's that's a far more impressive use of the tech, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I yeah, I see what you mean. With the streaming loading style. Yeah, that's true. Actually, hmm. doesn't matter though. I still think it's actually a pretty damn beautiful game in places. Well, I think so. It's a nice Daybreak thing. is lovely. I like Daybreak. Yeah, all the weather stuff and the sky stuff. I just think is really great. It's, it's slick. Yeah, yeah, you don't. You never really notice a harsh change. Although I, I still think it's a bit weird that Thieves Landing is always foggy. There's something weird. Thieves Landing uh, runs slow for me. Uh, when oh, I, I didn't get that. It's I got frame rate problems at Thieves Landing and specifically there. I don't know why. It's, it's always fo- well. I just don't, don't understand why it had to be always foggy. I mean, I know it's sort of like know. a creek area, but it's, it's like, like a kind of atmosphere thing because everyone there is supposed to be like a, a, bastard. a, a bastard. Yeah. Well, the last couple of times I've been there, I've just heard up and randoms have just started, started shooting. shooting. That's because like... you've got like honor. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Everyone thinks you're a goody goody, so they start shooting at you. I'm just sort of like going, "What the fuck's going on?" Well, the first time I went there for a mission, people started shooting at me, and I was very <laughs> confused. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a weird place, uh, Thieves Landing. I don't like that place very much. Um, it's like the only place where the honor system perhaps comes into play, I guess. But yeah, well, yeah, uh, but in that extreme fashion of people just shooting at you on sight, then yeah, mm. I bet if you went if you went very low honor, you know, if you became a scandal, they'd probably start shooting at you in Armadillo. You know, oh yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah it probably has the opposite effect. Um, which would but be... then it'd be less of a problem because that's you know, all that stuff's at the start of the game. So by the time you've got shit honor, yeah, you won't need to do too much in Armadillo anymore. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. So it might actually be easier to play the game like a bastard as it normally is. <laughs> well, then you get like high crime rates and then you have bounties and posses on there. And yeah. Which, which I've never really had a problem with. No, me either. Yeah. Uh, my bounty seems to keep disappearing as well. So last time I played, I got about $200 of bounty by accident, you know, like um, trying to save some law. Uh, you know, there's, there's that event where you see some guy running away from two cops who can't shoot for shit. So, oh yeah, yeah. So, so you shoot the guy for them, and it's like, "Thank you, partner." But at that precise moment, a cougar came and started attacking them. <laughs> of course, so, it did. So I shot at the cougar, and they thought they were shoot- I was shooting yeah, at them. them. So they shoot at me, and I get like a fifty dollars bounty on my head. And it's oh. like, uh, 
trying to save you from cougars. Yeah, it's like, Fools. there's bits like that where I think, obviously, this, the system isn't perfect. No. It's like, they obviously can't tell the difference between saving you from a cougar attack. You just have and, to let them die. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, I want the cougar. Let them die and then kill the cougar. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, it's right there, man. I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. It's like combinations of events don't work so well. Because when you see <coughs> wolves um, attacking a person, that's a, in and itself event, yeah. a set event whereby the wolves and the person were generated at the same time. Whereas if a wolf happens to come and attack you while you're in the middle of a, another event yeah. or whatever, then it gets confused, I think. I don't know. It doesn't happen that much, but yeah, it's noticeable when it does. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's not, it's not like end of the world type stuff, but it's... Yeah. Yeah, when it does happen, it can be a little weird. Yeah. I've, uh, yeah, and I found the last horse and things like that, so I'm currently the riding, black one. riding a black and. That's pretty damn cool, mm. that one. It's a noticeably faster. So that's the thing. You should get on it's, an it's, old horse and see what it's like. It's, you notice it's a yeah, lot slower. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't noticed the transition though. I'm mainly, but well, I've been riding my white one for a long time. It's not that much better think, than the white one. No, yeah. well, I don't, I'm not sure it is at all, but it's, I think the uh, white one's almost, yeah, it's perfectly good. Um, yeah, I like right. the white one. But you can always switch because now you can buy the deed for the black. Yeah, one. I haven't bought the, bothered buying the deed. For the oh, that's what happened. This is the other thing you go for, isn't it? There's the uh, get. There's an achievement for getting ten thousand dollars, and it's like I've, I've only got a quarter of that at the moment, and it's like holy shit. Well, I better not spend anything. Oh, except I might buy a, a rare gun for that achievement. But yeah. Does it count getting I... as like getting, or do you have to have it? How do you mean? Do you is have it, to have it in your bank, or is it just have oh, gotten ten thousand over time? That's, that's a very good question. I don't know. I'm not sure. It might. You might be right, Zach. It might be the other one, um, which would be easier. Yeah, because I've probably got half then. <laughs> Maybe. I really seem to remember saying on the podcast at the time that when I first tamed the black horse, it took me ages to find it, and then the moment I tamed it, that a cougar killed me instantly. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But then it didn't matter because I could then buy the deed. Yeah. So I went straight off and bought the deed. <laughs> so that's funny. Cougars! Cougars! Yeah, they're deadly and hard to find when you actually need them for hunting, for yeah. killing with the knife. I, oh. as, as I say, I haven't found any beavers yet for that deedless mission, except for the fact that I did find one beaver and I shot it and it promptly sort of exploded and left no corpse. Right, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, great, okay, I, I can't skin that bastard. Yeah, there are actually a ton of them down by the river in... in um, Colorado area, what's yeah. it called? It, tall trees. Um, I've only got one more bit of treasure hunting to do as well. Oh yeah. Oh, you're doing well with those treasure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shit hot at the treasure hunting. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just everything else. I got held up on the bloody hunting thing because of the boar task, and you don't get boars until you go west Elizabeth. Pretty Not much. Not really. Yeah. So that you end up on rank four for the entire game, pretty much unable to do that one. That's a bit of a weird balance, I think. That one. Yeah, probably. I could have like moved some of the other hunting challenges a bit earlier to stop you just because the bit I'm worried about now is that if I've only got a little bit left of the game to do then I should probably focus on doing a bit more of the ambient stuff in the game you know I mean like stranger challenges and finding shit and well, it seems and, like you're doing pretty well if you've all you've got is like California and the Daedalus one as that I know of yeah. right yeah I've yeah, just it's... got the stranger achievement so it's yeah you can't be doing that badly Seems like you're doing quite well at keeping up with all those things while you're playing the main game, which is, mm. I kind of did a lot of the stuff, you know, right at the end, before I did the last mission. I seem to remember riding around doing stuff it that way. Yeah, so, but I'm a bit worried that, you know, I've been doing, I have been doing the other stuff, with, but now I've got the, a pile of the other stuff to do, and that does get tedious after a while. You just want to do a mission after, yeah, a, yeah, definitely. after a bit. It's like... Definitely, yeah. That's why... Did. Did. That's what I did when I was playing it this morning, in fact. I sort of did about an hour of just dossing around, and then after after that hour, it's just like... Play a couple of missions, yeah. Yeah, and I need to kill some dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I get pissed off. I mean, I mean, you say that the social club stuff actually does give you some useful... The rock star social club options yeah. give you some useful extra stats to keep track of how you're doing. Yeah. Except for the fact I fucking hate that when you go to places... If you just want to check out places you've been to before, where there's right. been like the... Uh, um, the hideout challenges. There's, you know, they often get populated now by social club challenges. Oh, and so right. a shit ton of dudes spawn in, and if you're unlucky, they'll just gun you down in an instant. And it's like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. You bastards. Yeah, I didn't really have that when I was playing. I think it's like long play stuff that they're giving to people. You know, yeah, extra they, challenges they, that they've and stuff. mixed into the game. But it's just, 
I, I wish there's an option to turn them off because I don't want right. to take part in them really. It's like I've done oh, yeah, what no. I want to do those in the main game. I don't care about doing those for leaderboard kicks. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'd rather them just not be there. Mm. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's a bit. I don't know. I don't like that. And it's also a bit jarring, you know, for a game that's pretty good at the immersion thing to suddenly come up with social club challenge. Yeah. Well, I never, yeah, it's always a bit weird the way that they integrated the uh, live play into the game where you press a button and it goes into it. I mean, it's not a problem if you're just playing single player. It doesn't get in the way, but it's a bit strange how it's like, at any time, you can go, it's like in Burnout uh, Paradise, isn't it? Yeah. At any time, you could play online, right on this street. It's like, I don't want to particularly, thanks. Well, no, and I've never been able to test that because there's no one really playing Burnout Paradise on PC, which is a shame because the system is quite slick. Right. It just, it seems to be anyway. It's just that there's no one ever there, so it only ever puts me into a free burn session, which I don't understand the point of. Free burn! And then all that really does is let you go about the city and sort of like do the challenges or the crash mode and things like that. It's like playing the game by yourself without the missions being available, except there's like occasional other human players about. It's just like you're actually removing quite a lot for very little mm-hmm. game. So I don't get that. But anyway, that's a different story. That's Burnout Paradise. So, Red Dead. I'm not tagging what I'm doing. Um, That's okay, we've only talked about Red Dead. So, uh, yeah, so Red Red Dead Redemption is nearly done. <laughs> nearly there. We'll find, <laughs> find a report on that next time. I yeah, because then I'll have the ending and then we can decide whether or not it's worth talking about the ending. So you might not hear about it ever again. Yeah, we shall see. So have you had a chance to play anything else this week? Tiny bit of Final Fantasy. I'm still plodding through. I'm starting to see what... Um, Occasional guest Eddie um, sort of said about it. The sort of initial intrigue of the world and the story is wearing thin because it's eked out at such a slow rate. I mean, so there's been some crucial moments, like the parties are starting to meet up again and things like that after the split at the start of the game. Like all the characters are all coming together, which presumably means I'll get battle team control in my hands maybe in a bit. All right. Um, And... Finally, I'll start to get more fights with three characters rather than two characters, so the dynamics of the game will suddenly get more interesting um, in terms of the fight system. But, yeah, the, the story just... <laughs> he, he was right. It's not grabbing me anymore. There's like there's not enough as being revealed, even though there's a new character which sort of randomly seems to have just turned up, kind of, with no real explanation. It's just like, hi, guys. Right? Great, wonderful. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not. It's not grabbing me as much as it did at first. The fight system's still awesome, but and the corridors are starting to wear thin. I haven't ever found anything that's not a corridor yet. <laughs> well, I suppose that's just they decided on a style and just went for it, didn't they? Yeah, but it does seem a bit strange. It does. <laughs> if they could marry that fight system and some of the style of it, like the well, like we we're saying, the music. I think the graphics are really good, actually. Oh, they are. They're fantastic. Yeah, even on the three six. I mean, oh, you're playing on PS3. I'm playing the PS3 version. But, yeah, okay, so I get so, so I, I get know. the better graphic world. Yeah, but it's pretty pretty impressive stuff. Um, the but... character character modeling and animation is top notch. Seriously, top notch. I'm, I've, I've said that before, probably in those exact words. It's pretty Actually, damn good. But they are. They're pretty solid. But yeah, I mean, all they need to do is like make a t- more traditional Final Fantasy game with those elements, don't they? Really? Yeah. It's not. It's... It's, it, it seems to me like since with a town I mean, there's also system and a world map and all that. A, a bit of me wonders actually. I had the thought the other day. It's like when uh, when we went through the original, the old Final Fantasies or something, like because they were text based and things like that. And I'm going to mention it again. <laughs> just uh, just run away down and get it up. No, it's fine. I don't mind. But on, uh, on yeah, in FF7 because the story is great, or you know we think it's great. In FF8, I think the story is great. But I wonder if part of that is because it's not ruined by characterization in the sense of they don't exactly put much of the personality onto the characters. You kind of have to make that personality in your head like reading a book. And they don't have really bad line readings. Yeah, well, because... You don't have (laughs) stupid, like... I don't mind. I mean, the acting in FF13 is not too bad. It has its odd moment of being god awful, but you know, it's they're making. I think they're almost doing their best with what is essentially a very Japanese script that doesn't translate that I think loses something when they translate it into English and have to put voices onto it. 
Can you play it in Japanese with subtitles, like anime style? I think you can, actually, in the PS3 version. So. That might be worth a try just to see what the Japanese yeah, voice it might, it might, like. Yeah, it might be worth doing. But I'll oh, have a look. I don't know if that's available. I'm not entirely sure that's available. I get the feeling that was one of those... Yeah, off the top of my head, I have a feeling there was a bit of a, uh, a controversy about that or something. It's like, they didn't Japanese this one. What's going on? But it is epic. You know, it's a large amount of content, I guess. So it was a struggle to fit on discs, but... Oh, I see. To fit all the voice acting for the other for for multiple languages, so yeah. I can see whether because there is a lot of voice work in this. Yeah, it also suffers from the little, you know. Well, well do you know what I mean when I say that? Anyway, that perhaps it was the fact that you know, since FF10 and for instance FFX and things like that, that maybe the stories have been harder to get behind because of the character, because of the extra acting level that they've tried to put on, <laughs> because of the cinema level that because you can't like. I suppose. I mean, do you find Advent Children less appealing than Fun Fantasy VII story just in general? No, I like Advent Children. I think it's a great... Because that is obviously the same story stuff, but yeah. with the voice acting. Well, no, but I think that's done really well. Right. I, I think there's, some, there's something that they got right about that. You know, it, it's, it's a bit weird. You know, this, you know, it's a typical Japanese sort of... Is that, an Eng- is that got an English dub? It has got an English dub, yeah. Right. I think. Yeah. Um, but it's... It doesn't seem too bad. I mean, it's a typical Japanese not making too much sense story, but <laughs> uh, Geo Stigma in the subs it. <laughs> it's uh, oh, it makes sense more or less. Kind of. World of Five Eighty Seven. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a kind of but not completely kind of story. Like a bit like. Well, it's because they had to invent like, like they had to invent something else to go wrong after the neat wrap up of Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They tied it all up, and then they were like, oh shit, we need to fit, add some more to this story. Well, we'll invent a new disease thing that's caused by something. Well, yeah. yeah. Come up with something. That'll do. Everyone <laughs> likes these characters. We'll just... Um... Throw them into some slightly less adventurous turmoil. Oh, and there's Sephiroth. Oh, and there's the bike thing that has the sword built into it. Yeah, <laughs> Sephiroth! <laughs> bum, bum, bum. And then there's an eagle. <laughs> no, that's the other Final Fantasy film. Or is there an eagle? I don't know, it might be. Well, probably. So, yeah. It's a very traditional thing. Follow a bird as it flies over some kind of landscape. Uh, so, Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah. Getting there. Where it's, are it's, you? It's, probably not getting there. I don't, I don't I'm know. I'm 17 hours in. So are you so like, not I, even I've out of the tutorials yet? I'm not out of the tutorials. It's <laughs> oh. not by a long way. How um, long is that game? Is it like a 50 hour jobby? Probably, yeah. Jeez. It's uh, and I've played it less than I've played Red Dead, which says something. So well, it's, uh, not really. Well, and I guess I suppose you want you know it's not my <laughs> there's the urge to play it because it's not my copy of the game. So it's, yes, uh, that's true, I suppose. Well, I've got Valkyria Chronicles to tackle probably next, Woo. which will be uh, which I'm looking forward to. Is that what we're hearing about next time? <laughs> well, if I finish Red Dead by next time, then yeah. Oh, I'm sure you will. Um, although I'm, I'm a bit dubious, maybe I shouldn't take on two RPGs at the same time. You need to play Batman, damn it. Yeah, I do need to <laughs> anyway, play Batman. Never mind. I do need, need to, to play finish Batman. Super Meat Boy, damn it. Both of you. Don't need Love to. Fighters. Don't need to do that. Yes, you do. We have enough coverage of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. You don't no. know the awesomeness. But I will. I will try. Dirty bit. Dirty bit. <laughs> <laughs> Got that black eyed piece. Right, so anything else? Or is that uh, your section? Well, me and Zach went back to a bit of TF2 and a bit of Monday Night Combat this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How's I it guess. treating you today? <laughs> this, this... Monday Night Combat was freaking awesome. I, had a, I, I was on fire well, at that run. Some of it. Yeah, it started off a bit shaky, but yeah, then by the end of it, I was on fire. It was like three three shots, three headshots at times, and it's like, I can deal with that. That's cool. The one round did you play this life with it, pretty much. Yeah, no, and I rocked it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had, it's... it's you saw want... the new lighting, except you didn't. Oh, yeah. The way you did. No, I just right. saw the new lighting. Yeah, the new lighting. Flew, it was like... Rob was like, oh, I need to go to bed. And it's like, but you haven't seen the one map where the lighting has changed significantly. Well, let's see if it comes up next. Oh, it came up next. How handy. <laughs> and it does look good. I have to say, the new lighting model is nice. It, gives it, it does give the levels more character. But as I said before, I, we, I think I would have preferred more levels <laughs> yeah. than for them to revamp a lighting engine. You know, there's nothing wrong with the look of the game. Who cares? It looks good. It's, it's, it's got its style down to a, down to a T, really. Yeah, yeah, the lighting is an improvement. But give us more maps, bitches. So, you know, do a TF on us, please. Please. I'm sure they want to. Get a community. Yeah, get the, get the yeah, get the community in, in on it at least. And then 
I'm sure you could come up with some sort of level editor based on... Well, it's know, unreal, so... Yeah, using unreal. your head and things like that. So that could be done. I don't know. I wonder if a bit of me is sort of just going off um, like online shooters in general because I find myself getting more and more frustrated more and more often with all of them. You said you played some Halo. Yeah, I've played some Halo and that was, you know, usual jank with Halo happened, like... Got into a fight. The one that I remember, because it was frankly ridiculous, was... I, I fucking hate sword base. Let, let me just be honest. That that level is... Yeah. There's that bit at the, the top. Worst level. Yeah, the bit at the there? top where everyone always fights, and it's just so random whether you win or lose. But it's also random because I don't know what it is, but I never have a good... Or it never feels like I have a fair chance on that level. Things seem to go very wrong. The one that came to my mind was where I caught someone with their back to me from a distance, and I thought, right, I'll play this one safe, I'll start attacking him from a distance. Got the DMR out, um, shot him a few times, got like three three or four decent shots, and then, because he noticed, the, go- the gap was closed very quickly, so he started trading punches. Uh, I get my first my punch in first. He gets his punch in. I get my punch in. He gets his punch in. Yeah. At that point, I should be up on the damage scale because I got those initial shots in, and he hasn't fired a shot at me. Mm. I lose on the second punch. Yeah, and it's like that makes no sense. Sorry, yeah. where, where is the logic in that? And well, there, that the second happened. or the third? Uh, second punch. So you know, I, 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 but I got the first punch in. After my shots, then yeah. he'd, uh, by that point he was punching me. But it's basically, I was some, I was three or four shots with the DMR and two punches versus his two punches, and his second punch killed me. If you're, I don't know how it works in Halo, but if you if you'd shot him with the DMR oh, and well, had taken I, all the shield off, would your punch only take off his shield and leave his health intact? Does it overrun onto the health? possibly? Yeah, that that might be true. Actually, that that might have. Happened. But even so, yeah. my punches were first. <laughs> And yeah, so but even by that logic, I should have won. And that's it's, true. That was a really, really blatant. That's not worked quite correctly, or I don't understand how that's worked. Oh, and I must point out, they were punches to the face. They weren't. Uh, they, I didn't, <laughs> didn't suddenly. I didn't, didn't suddenly present. My, I, I didn't suddenly present my back to him. So um, all all melee hits in Halo do the same amount of damage, right? They're all identical, are they? Pretty much. It's like the first from the flag. Yeah. Right. And yeah, ball. and the ball. <laughs> yeah. The skull thing. <laughs> well, there was a period, like, uh, yeah, I think they did change that because there was a period where, like, where, where supposedly different weapons in like the Halo Two era did different amount of melee damage. Right. Like some of the pistols, for instance, actually did more melee damage than some of the bigger weapons because you used your fist rather than the bits of the gun. Yeah, right. And uh, so you could get a better punch on or something. Like the plasma pistol supposedly had one of the best melee hits. I seem to remember because mm. you just you just got to swing where you left. <laughs> yes, um, things like that. Um, but I don't know if that's still true in in um, uh, in, reach. in reach. It doesn't feel like it because, as you say, the first melee hit tends to knock the shield out immediately, um, and usually the second hit after that is a killer. Um, yeah, I'm, re- I'm not a fan of that sword base though. I mean, sword base is god awful. That it's, bit it's, at just, the top. it's just a really bad design. Everything gets all the fighting gets focused in one place. Uh, I can I mean, see what I, they were trying to do, but you never fight in the central room at no. all. Like it's all it's always up at the top there, and like at and the you know that bit with yeah that lift that well the vent that goes up and takes in, you into to that little room. dead end room, which yeah. so you can count like nothing else. Well, if they're camping in there, you're supposed to what you're supposed to do is throw your grenades in first and then go in, which I've tried numerous times. Yeah, but they hover never just works. outside the doorway of that yeah. little room. So, but if you hover if you throw your grenades up, they're not going to explode anywhere near them because they'll just yeah. be hiding around the corner. And they can see all your dots coming because you have no choice but to move there. Yeah. So you're you're making yourself totally obvious that you're coming that way. Even if you have a sword mm. and you go straight up there, you're still going to get killed before you can use it on anyone. Yeah. I find pretty much. And uh, so the only way is to, you know, climb the whole way up. And I'm not the best Halo player in the world. It has to be said. So it's kind of yeah. like you know my suck. You know, it's just the my suckage combined with supreme camping ability and. Yeah, it just always ends badly. I don't like yeah. it. I hate that level. I think it's just really imbalanced. It seems to swap between, if you're playing team-based uh, Slayer, or the normal, it seems to swap between the teams who controls that top yeah. part, and like that big room next to that corridor with the Well, little... the initial spawn is incredibly important for that, because yeah. it's basically whoever gets there first yeah, true, tends yeah. to hold it for the entire game. Yeah. And then the other team has no choice but to attempt to get it off them, yeah. which 
usually ends badly. Trying to jet back up there to that little sniper thing. Yeah. Can you get up there from one of the walkways? Because yeah, then you, yeah, can, you can you can pack up. Yeah. Uh, and then you could sneak down into that big room, at the top. Anyway, never mind. Uh, Halo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I've been playing a bit of that. Annoyingly, um, I, d- I didn't realise this, but your career stats don't count offline firefights anymore. So if you play on your local console, you don't get any stats towards the firefighting. And I've never really liked how firefight matchmaking works. No. It's, it's like, I don't know why they just haven't made the actual firefight game the online game, because it's much better. Hmm. And it's like, that that doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, so we, me and Kips and our respective girlfriends attempted to play some firefight. Old normal difficulty to try and teach them the art of dual stick shooters. <laughs> um, it wasn't too successful, let's put it that way. It's not an easy art to learn. It's not easy. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm just annoyed that none of that counted towards anything. You don't even get credits for it, for your army, really? I don't think. Or at you least it didn't. Because you, know, you, you can normally get fuck tons of credits by yeah. playing firefight mode, especially in matchmaking. But yeah. on, on an offline game, it didn't seem to give you shit. I suppose to stop you from potentially setting up custom games where you could just haul the cash, but it's still a bit irritating. Mm. Right. It's still good. I still enjoy it. It's you can have you can still have some bloody hilarious moments or some some ridiculous sprees and they're just so satisfying when you get on them. So it's uh Yeah. And there are some some of the new well, some of the forge maps that are hanging about now are pretty awesome. Um that you end up playing. Like there's that little area in the forge levels where it's like a little uh, it's like a rocky cavern where you're like pretty much enclosed in on all sides except one side is like rocks and then an endless drop instead of like walls. And there's, right. There's a couple of redesigns like a, fr- a sanctuary from Halo 2 is one of the redesigns they've done in that area. And there's another level that I can't remember the forge name of but it's kind of basically got like three towers. Um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's the level. Um, a tower in one end tower and then a central one. Yeah, I know. And uh, that's 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 a great level. Yeah, that's, that's 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 really good fun. I almost enjoy the forge levels more than I do the actual maps, mm. which just goes to show how how what how keeping it simple works in in multiplayer games. Really, just keep the map design simple. It's more fun. It's true. It's true. By a long way. And uh, yeah, so we play some more of that probably. Uh, what else have I been doing? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I had a really shit cut, shit run on TF2. Although my, I think I got the flare award for that day. <laughs> there was hair in your mouth. Blame that. There was hair in my mouth at one point. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> I had to sit there cleaning and <laughs> hoping I wasn't get killed. But pruning my mouth. Hmm. It's 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 alive. I tell you. <laughs> I was trying to think. I don't think I've really done much else, really. Right. I, I I had had plans to potentially have a connect this weekend, but they didn't happen. No, um, it's been too sunny. Yeah. Too much golfing, real golfing, yeah, none too of your fake, real golf. fake golfing going on. Yeah. Does uh, that have? Does the new Tiger Woods have connect support? I don't think so. Mm. Actually, that seems like a missed opportunity, though. Given how much support it's got, they, move support, hasn't it? How, well, how much support they've given We Motion Plush as well. We motion plush. <laughs> I guess it's a lot harder to develop that. I mean, for move, you could just port it virtually. Pretty much, yeah. It's probably easier because of the one. Actually, in, in, in fairness, the move control is probably going to be a lot slicker than the connect control. Yeah, probably because of the far closer. The move, move is actually great for those sort of racket or bat or club type games. Yeah, I guess it's uh, ideal, really. Because it was you. Yeah, you'll get a far closer relationship to what you're actually trying to do. Of, except for the weightiness of the club, I guess, which might be a bit of an issue, but... Yes, as always. Because you could, like, swing it hella fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's better than nothing at all, for, like, connect, without swinging anything. Unless you've got an actual club out. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, what's, what's that game? What's the actual total title of that game? It's like, is it Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2011 The Masters? Yep. I think Fuck that's me. it. That's quite long. <laughs> <laughs> Colon the Masters. <laughs> uh, which are going well. Might watch some of the fa- final tonight, see who wins. Right. Isn't that, isn't that the golf music? Or? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Sweet. Well, it is on the BBC. On the Beebs. On the Beebs. Right, I better talk about what I've been playing. Yeah, I relinquish. All I played is. I want Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. 
finally uh, got around to playing some Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Dum 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 dum. So I played a few hours of that um, in between my first driving lesson and various other things to do. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Is it much better than two? Really? I can't really say whether it's better than two yet because I've only got I have all the mechanics haven't really come into place yet. Because I'll be honest, Matt wasn't really selling me on it because you know, <laughs> well, I, 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 admittedly, my only experience with it is from the first game, and that wasn't great. But I would definitely play two first if you want to know what the hell is going on with the story, and mm. also two isn't that old, and I wouldn't say Brotherhood looks significantly better than two. It's all the same engine, uh, obviously. Uh, I think the lighting might be slightly better, but I can't really remember. It's basically the same looking, I would say. And uh, so um, so it starts with like a, a, almost immediately after the end of Assassin's Creed 2. So if you don't know what's going on there, it might be quite confusing. Um, although I'd forgotten that the ultimate target, the final boss of Assassin's Creed 2, I'd forgotten the story point that you don't actually kill him. You Spoiler kind of, alert! You kind of spare him, so I'd forgotten that, and then and then in the in Brotherhood, I was like, "What the hell? Oh, did I? Why did I do that?" I'm obviously very compassionate for some reason, <laughs> even though I've been killing people the entire previous <laughs> game. I'm like the ultimate bad guy. Nah, he can live. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, so he's not so bad, really. He's not so bad. He's a good hugger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it starts with. Uh, Ezio getting it on with the lady as usual because he's, oh, he's a ladies man he's pretty cool I like Ezio can you I imagine f- what like old style Venetian porn music would sound like <laughs> yeah. I don't know it wouldn't have saxophone because it would have been invented if you could do that on a viola- violin you know, viola- a viola- phone. <laughs> <laughs> viola- phone. I don't think they had wah-wah pedals in the in the, <laughs> in the renaissance period play on the bagpipe <laughs> on a bagpipe. <laughs> I think they even have bagpipes in Italy in Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there was a bit of uh, getting down. So there was an extended sex scene at the start of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, all rendered poly- polygonally. Boobs! Uh, yeah, there's, there's some boobage going on in that game. Uh, but uh, And then, of course, your castle gets attacked and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then you get... Uh, it also carries on, of course, the story in the... My castle in, the, in another castle. In the present day, which isn't the present day, it's slightly in the future, and that's the kind of Desmond story, the, Desmond. the overarching Desmond story. But my problem with Assassin's Creed is that I don't care about Desmond, I only really care about Ezio. Mm, but uh, apparently you're going to care about Desmond. Well, that's what they keep saying, <laughs> I'm not sure. And also the other guy... Is it going to become Desmond actually becomes an assassin in the modern day? and that'll be but he the, Yeah, 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 then. that's what's happening. The weird thing is that... <laughs> Supposedly, he has this bleeding effect whereby if he spends all this time on his ass in a cou- in this couch, which is the yeah, animus, animus, yeah, yeah uh, all day, every day, getting fat, which they make a comment on, you're <laughs> getting fat even though he looks perfectly slim, mm-hmm. but he has this bleeding effect where he learns the assassin skills. But at the at the start of the game, there's a bit where you and well, you come to the your base in the past, Monterey Guillaume or whatever it is. Uh, you go there in the present. And it's still there. It's just got some cars parked around and some, some, some traffic light signs and stuff and some uh, electricity boxes. Which is true, because if you literally go to Italy and go there, it is It'll all still there. Like that, yeah. yeah, so anyway, uh, you go there and that's your that becomes your base in the present. You find the kind of uh, the, the, the uh, basement area, uh, tomb, whatever it is, uh, from Assassin's Creed 2 and you set up there for the Animus or whatever. Uh, but um, when you're trying to find that, you go through these sewers, and there's a bit where you're going through the sewers, and you're Desmond, and you can do all the acrobatic leaps and stuff that that Ezio can do, but you're Mm. Desmond. But what's more, the woman who's with you, the Christian Christian Stewart played character, Lucy, she also does these stunts to get around, mysteriously, because she's an assassin too, right? But she's not spent any time in the Animus. That you know. So she's obviously... Well, that I know of, yeah. <laughs> so she's obviously some kind of mega gymnast as well. And and also they're talking to each other all while they're doing these gymnast moves. <laughs> and it, it made me notice that it just stop wasn't... to breathe. Yeah, they don't stop to breathe. In Uncharted 2, they sound like they're really there. Yeah. In this, it sounded like they were in oh, a vocal yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't make that... Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't tell you about the Final Fantasy Thirteen. really has that problem as well. The vocals are... There's no dynamic range to any of the vocals. Yeah. So there's a bit, I think, Zach saw, where they're trying to sneak around these, like, dragony things. 
and Vanille, who has an irritatingly squeaky <laughs> voice at the best of times, right. is like, they're like, we got to be quiet. we got to sneak around these things. Maybe they won't wake up. And they're trying to sneak around, except for Vanille, at full volume, because there's no, like, dynamic range in the vocals. It's going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sneak around. That's real quiet. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's real sne- sneaky. Unsurprisingly, they wake up. <laughs> yeah. And a murdering sequence commences. So yes, so they're they're running through and climbing and jumping and they're just obviously in a vocal booth. Booth. And what's more, vocal booth. <laughs> the Des- Desmond is played by Nolan North, who's the same guy as oh, yeah, yeah. as uh, plays Nathan Drake. Although they don't so really clearly see... when he was recording this, they did they forgot to put stage directions. Where it would have been like right, it said sound out of breath or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's <laughs> just something they did it so well in Uncharted Two. Like every, the timing of when they said things was at a time when you were running across a room rather than when you were climbing a wall. Like mm. everything happened. Whereas this was like a cutscene that's happening while you're doing. Like it didn't sound like that she could be the other side of the room and you could hear her quite clearly. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It just wasn't as good as Uncharted 2 well, in that bit. I think Uncharted always make, kept the in-game speech quite short. Yeah, so exactly. So there was never enough... When it triggered them, there was never enough time for you to get to something that would interrupt the vocals. Yeah. You see what I mean? So this sequence was like... Or someone else would talk at you more than you would talk. Exactly. So, so it didn't seem so bad. So this was basically exposition plus platforming. It was a very short sequence, but it just struck out, stuck out for me that bit. But uh, yeah, that all looks very nice. And then I go into the Animus once we're set up, and there I am, Ezio, in Rome, uh, Roma, which is the new city, which is huge, but I haven't seen much of it yet, but it seems like it's not as uh, like unique as like or pretty as mm. as Florence or Venice, but it is big, and you can uh, and there are horses now. And I thought the horses would be limited to just like the outskirts of the city, but it seems like you can just ride the horse through the streets quite effectively, uh, trotting it through, and it is faster than the running. It, yeah. Or because of course the classic way to get ac- across a city in Assassin's Creed is to climb to the roofs and jump across the roofs, but then there was always guards and stuff, mm. and it actually turns out to be easier to run through the streets. And now you can. Uh, Horse it, or whatever. <laughs> you can ride through the streets. Horse and it, it. it literally has a button just like uh, Red Dead where you press it and he whistles. Get horse. He whistles and the horse appears. So that's great. Uh, that's cool. Um, so what I did was, I thought, oh, oh, and there was like, it had little pop-ups when I was doing the first few fights saying, oh, now you can do this, new things, or whatever. Mm. So, uh, new combat system, or whatever. So I thought, okay, well what I'll do is, it's already shown me there's this virtual training thing inside the Animus uh, for learning the combat. Because in the previous game, you had like a little arena in your base where you could fight, like, do practice fights. Mm. And that's how you learned. But in this one, it doesn't have that. And instead, you can just go into the menus and select like a virtual arena for training okay. the fights. Well, they had some of that in the first game, didn't they? Where they teach you, taught you the art of how the HUD and how the sneaking system yeah. works and the alert levels. That was all done in the Animus. In virtual reality, yeah. yeah. So, but this time you have a full-on fighting bits. There are like five combat challenges in the virtual thing. And I know it made me do one of them, like in my initial thing. And then I saw that it has bronze, silver, gold medals on them. I thought, well, if I, if I do the, if I do the gold on all of these, mm. then I'll be good at combat. And I'll be able to do the missions through much easier. So I'll learn the new combat system. Little did I realise, of course. I, I don't know, because I haven't played through it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if getting all those three golds is actually the hardest part of the game. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like doing the Batman uh, challenge missions uh, before you do the game. Mm. And um, they are the hardest part of Batman, getting the, all the golds or whatever on those. So, and uh, sure enough, once I got all the golds, it came up with an achievement that said perfectionist. And I was like, damn right, I am, <laughs> clearly. So um, it's a bit of a problem that I, if you have OCD, then <laughs> then you end up doing a really hard part. And so how it works is, it's it's basically, it's the same as the old system, but they've kind of shoehorned in Batman style stuff. Mm-hmm. They've kind of copied Batman in a way. So that kind of works. So what happens is Batzio. that. Batsio. So what you do, Batsio, yeah. yeah you, can call it you are now Batsio. <laughs> so basically, it's confusing because. Um, first of all, it's confusing because it's hard to tell when you're in the targeting mode. This was a problem from the last game mm. I found, which is uh, in Zelda, you hold down the Z and you're in Z targeting, right? Which made that widescreen effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it was it, very obvious. It letterboxed the screen to say, you're focused in on this guy. Yeah. So focused, your vision is obscured. <laughs> 
Whereas in this, it's like, it was the same in the previous, but you kind of, you press the left trigger to kind of lock onto someone, but you only press it once. And it's hard to see whether you're locked on because they just glow a bit white, but otherwise look normal. And what also happens is the symbol above their heads changes from like a chevron into showing blocks for their health. Uh, But it's quite a subtle effect because those little symbols above their heads are really small. Mm. Because the um, the one when you're not in lock on kind of shows their alert level, okay, and yeah. then when you're locked on, it shows their health. Mm. But if you're not locked on, then uh, your blocking thing doesn't work or something. I don't know. But you hold down the right trigger to block, basically, when you've got your sword out. Mm. Um, and didn't that used to work? Where you, if you were just doing that in general, everyone around you'd block everyone around you's attacks unless they came from behind or something. Or yeah, I think that does work. But uh, anyway, it's confusing whether or not you're in the targeting mode. And if you and if you're not in the targeting mode and you just bash on someone, it automatically targets them. Okay. So uh, so you could go through the whole game without knowing that you can press the left trigger to actually target someone. But it comes in handy because sometimes it's like, what the hell's happened? Because mm. I wasn't in the right mode. Anyway, so what you do for the combat is you, um, depending on the enemy, but if they're normal enemies, then you block uh, and uh, wait for them to attack you and then you counter. But now that once you're in the counter, you can do a Batman style, select somebody else and mash attack and it will chain them. So it yeah, goes okay, straight yeah. into attacking the other one mm. and you can chain, chain, chain. Oh, so they've tried to copy the, what, did they call it free flow? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, so they so you can chain them, but uh, it's very easy to get hit while you're in the middle of doing the the chaining. So you have to watch all the time because when you're doing the chaining, you have to mash X, but you have to not be blocking, right? Okay. But as soon as someone tries to attack you, you counter by holding block and pressing X. So you have to you you chain around a bit, and then if someone is about to attack you, then you 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 hold block and press X, and hopefully you will you will successfully counter, and then you won't drop your combo. Okay. And you can keep chaining. Yeah. Uh, so you have to counter rather than actually block to keep your chain. Is what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. If you just block, they'll you 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 will block, and you won't take damage. Hopefully, mm. uh, but you will lose your combo. What's the advantage to comboing? Well, it makes it kills instantly, basically. Oh, okay. So uh, wh- while you're chaining around, because in Batman it knocks someone over instantly, yeah. but they could get up. But this is like you chain what's called executions, which are the kind of stabby deaths. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does like these horrible animations, and there's a bunch of animations for them that look really cool. It looks really brutal when you're actually <laughs> in there, and uh, it looks like you're an uber assassin. So it looks awesome. But there are a lot of things that can go wrong, like... Um, even the normal enemies seem to be able to just grab you uh, hmm. instead of doing a sword attack. And the ca- the normal counter doesn't seem to be effective with that. Because what you're supposed to do is, apparently you're supposed to hold the block and press B to counter an incoming the grab. grab. But you can't, I personally can't tell the difference between the telegraphs of whether they're going to uh, hit you with a sword or yeah, grab. Yeah. I can't tell. And, and their little icon, their health icon, when you when you're targeting them flashes before they're about to attack mm. but it doesn't tell you whether it's going to be a grab or a, or a or a lunge with the sword so it's very hard to tell so basically what you have to do is that will basically break your combo if you, they grab you yeah and you have to get out of it before the next person hits with the sword by bashing b mm. uh anyway so and then there's and then to add some more complication to that there are different kinds of enemies that have like long pikes that you can't counter normally and the only way to really counter them is is well, you can dodge out of the way if you're okay. lucky, but the only way to really counter them is to select unarmed, and then you can, if you counter, you perform a disarm and grab their weapon and oh, kill see. them with it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool, but it's quite hard because you change you your weapon. Switch your weapon, yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. the D-pad, and you feel really vulnerable if you take you're in the middle of enemies and you take away your sword. Mm. Anyway, so and there's that, and then there's the uh, the hidden blade you can use in combat, but you can't really block with it. Uh, because it's not it's like a tiny. sword, so you have to perform a successful counter, otherwise you will uh, take damage. Uh, so that's all of that. And so what you can do is hope get in a position where a, a pansy enemy attacks you, counter it, and then chain into a the big enemy, enemy and that will yeah. take them the threat down before mm. they can get you with their pike or whatever the hell or their big sword. Uh, 
Uh, so, yeah. so you have to basically play enemy snooker, is what you're saying. Yeah. You have to pot the red and then, yeah. and to, to stand a better chance on the black. I mean, that's true in Batman as well, but Batman just seems a lot more polished in that regard, and this seems a bit tacked on a to an old copycat. system. Yeah. It is a bit copycat, but I'm not really blaming them because it does work, uh, and it is, it is more fun, it is better, and you can have more epic fights where you fight a lot more enemies mm. that way. But, yeah, because uh, yeah, you have surely, yeah. If you have the ability to do more instant kills, then you need more enemies to make that a worthwhile system. Exactly. Otherwise, all the fights will be over in like <laughs> like the start of FF13, where some of the fights are literally four seconds long. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the new combat system. And there were these three challenges where like you have to you get a time limit, forty five seconds, one minute, you know, one minute thirty, and uh, your score is the number of enemies killed times your maximum combo. So you, you have to basically get that max combo up to 11 or whatever in order to, to get a chance of scoring the gold or whatever. Uh, so, um, and that's quite hard because, as I say, it's really easy for them to just grab you or do something that will break your combo. And it's really frustrating. Whereas in Batman, it's much easier to keep your combo going. And that can go up to like 30 or something in Batman. Whereas in this, it's much more difficult. But I managed to get those in the end. But I was screaming at it. And But now I know how to do the combat. The rest of the game, the actual game, is going to be well easy, I think. Yeah, probably. Uh, so there are those. And there's also um, two. the other two challenges are like, um, how many people can you kill without ever taking any damage? Mm. And you do that once with all weapons and once with the hidden blade. Just only the hidden blade, which mm. is quite hard because if you mess up any counter, they will deal you damage. Anyway, so that's that. So I, I think I probably did one of the hardest bits straight off. And then, so I go into the actual story, and uh, I'm enjoying what's going on with Ezio and what's going on with his family, and uh, he's in a new city, and that's all, all the voice acting is quite good, I think, mm. in uh, in uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, and uh, with the exception of the present guys, because you yeah, with the exception of the present guys, uh, the the uh, the Danny Wallace character, everyone had said in the reviews that he's got less annoying. And when he may have got less annoying, he's, he's still, still annoying. annoying. I think he is, anyway. I don't know. Or maybe, I think maybe, like, I don't know if this is true, but I think Americans might have a more tolerance for annoying English people because they think, haha, English people are funny. I, don't I, know. I, I had a weird moment the other day. This isn't entirely related, but talking of voice acting. I watched the first episode of Chuck. Um, All right. The other week with Womany from Las Vegas. Yeah, it took me a little while, but like halfway through the episode, it's like I know her, That's right. and I know her from a video game. Yeah, I don't know whether it'd be happy about that or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's got blonde hair in that, hasn't she? Yes. Yeah, but um, but yeah, that was kind of cool. Like, like yeah, because you're right. It's sort of like the Mass Effect Two version of that actress, whatever her net real name actually is, is. She's Australian. Uh, she? Yeah, Australian Miranda person. Uh, yeah, the, the Mass Effect 2 approximation is actually really it's close. It's actually really close, yeah. I know, it's frightening. Uh, so, yeah. So there's um, quite an op- a bit of opportunity for more combat just in general in this game because in the old game, to expand your map, you you had to climb to the viewpoints and scan the area and it made that <laughs> which you hear over and over again. So you've got the, uh, the, the spinning view. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's back again, of course, to expand your map. But now there are these Borgia Towers which uh, exert influence over the city and you have to take them down. And you have to... So in order to do those, you get into the area, which is a restricted area. So if anyone's guards see you, they attack you. Find the dynamite. <laughs> you find the Borgia captain, who's like the hardcore guy in control, the boss of that area. Who has the dynamite. Yeah, who has the dynamite. You kill him. Uh, and Take then the you, dynamite. <laughs> then, you, then you climb the tower. With the dynamite. And you place the dynamite at the top of the tower, and you set it off. And at the then, top? Yeah. So you burn the tower. So you have to you have to reach the top of the tower, set light to it, and there's like okay. petrol there or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is at the time. Tar, so I don't you, know. you use dynamite for burning now. Yeah, so now it burns. There's no dynamite. You just oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, but the tower burns, and so but you have to kill the Borgia captain first before you can do that. And the trouble is, I thought it'd be easy because well. I, it isn't, but I mean, I thought you could you could get above him and then just do the air assassination on him and then just climb the tower. But they're always undercover or something or guarded by about fifteen guys, so you have to get there in. Has and, to be a combat sequence. Yeah, yeah, you do it well. 
yeah, you do a massive fight, and sometimes they try and escape and run away, mm. so you have to chase them down and uh, tackle them and then stab them, and then you can uh, do... So you have to kill them first, and then you climb the tower and set them alight and stuff. So it's a bit of a... It's a bit, a bit of a blabber. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it does mean you get more combat, but I, the, the ones that I've done so far have been in quite tight quarters, and it's really hard to see what the hell is going on uh, when there's, like, f- f- ten guys, and it's all in, like, a tiny street. Um, so that's a bit of a problem because you do have full camera control, but you're using all your thumbs mm. to do the combat. And, um, so it makes it quite hard to see who's going to attack you next, even if their symbol is flashing, because it might be behind a wall or something. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and when you mix that up with the multiple kinds of enemies that there are, like the big brutes with the pikes and stuff, then it gets like, I mean, this to me sounds like what the kind of the same problems I had with the first Assassin's Creed that they haven't really although they've expanded and then expanded and, and improved in some ways but the fighting just always felt a bit like a clusterfuck you know well it's, it's a lot always, better I'll say yeah yeah I just it, I couldn't I couldn't well it seemed in back in Assassin's Creed 1 it seemed too simple and yet still too unwieldy mm. and it's like well maybe it's you know maybe that's still the snow where they've made it better and more complicated but it's still relatively unwieldy in it's, ideal conditions you can do it perfectly but it's never ideal conditions yeah. And you always lose a bit of health. But it seems to regenerate quite... Well, it's like the way it works is you have armour and you end up with a lot of health towards mm. the end of the game, certainly in Assassin's Creed 2. It's quite dodgy at the start. But, like, if if your one of your squares of health gets doesn't get fully taken down, then it regenerates. But if it does, okay. then it stays down okay. and you have yeah. to take medicine, which you can carry with you, or visit a doctor. Um, so that's, that's fine. Um... So and of course you so as discussed uh, in 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 two uh, in you bought upgrades to Monteregioni, but now you're buying upgrades to like every shop in Rome, hmm. so you end up owning the whole thing. But I haven't got to the point yet, so I can't report on the actual Brotherhood bit where you okay, can yeah. call call on other assassins. So that'll be for next time. I need my bros. But one other thing <laughs> I noticed is that like now missions at the start of the mission it gives you a secondary objective. And it labels it full synchronization, right? Because the idea is you synchronize your memories mm-hmm. by performing them. Anyway, so if you don't do this, the the um, the secondary objective the the first time, it says fifty percent synchronized. Mm. And I find that being um, a little harsh, being OCD, yeah. I have to go back and like do the do the thing again, which actually kind of does break the flow of the game, but it's good that they're in there as extra challenges. But some are really quite difficult. Uh, like, um, I mean, the mission itself is easy. 50% is easy, but getting that 100% is really quite hard. Like, um, like it, they're fairly arbitrary. Some of them, like, do the mission within a certain time. And then there was one where I got set upon by a bunch of uh, uh, angry you know, assassins with in wolf outfits with swords mm. and stuff, and uh, it was easy to kill them all. But the um, uh, the secondary objective is don't get hit, oh, and that's bloody hard. And I restarted it quite a few times. And the problem was when you could restart the memory, and you can go back and restart any memory at any time in the DNA menu from mm. the thing. So you can go back and do these at any time if you want the full synchronization. So you'd have to do it straight immediately after. And presumably because it's from the menu, you don't have to travel there. Right? No, it's instant. Yeah, that's so that's cool. cool. But um, the trouble was when uh, when you restart it, that you walk forward about two paces, and then it plays a cutscene. And to skip the cutscene, you then have to go into the menu again, press skip cutscene, press Are you sure? Yes. Then the fight starts. So if you fuck, right. if you yeah. mess it up, you will end up going through that sure. rigmarole quite a few times, which is real pain. But um, um, you see, I don't mind it when games implement the system where you know the Are you sure stuff yeah. is a bit. Irritate it. Well, you know, that makes sense if you've never seen the cutscene before or you're on a, t- a new playthrough, you know, yeah. it's the first time you come across that event. But once you've done that event, you it shouldn't should be freely to. skippable. You know, just push a button. Push A. Good. Yeah. Or well, maybe not A, but like start or back or something like that. That would be yeah. fine. Yeah. If they had that, that would be fine. But I find that. And like, then. Because the I did like in Red Dead how you could pause any cutscene. Absolutely any cutscene you can pause and just say, oh, hang on a minute, I've got a phone call. Or, oh, that's way cool. Or, you can pause any of them. Although it does show up how the sort of, like, there's a, there's a weird thing. So you can pause cutscenes 
and the models all jiggle slightly. <laughs> very, jingling, very jingling. slightly. You can only see a few pixels changing, but it, it's a little bit funny. Oh, okay. I actually noticed that jiggle once on a game of Liar's Dice as well, where I, I'd lost one of my die and I was throwing it in, except before my hand had even reached the dice, the dice was jiggling a bit on the table. <laughs> it just looked a bit funny. It's like, I'm going to chuck that dice, I'm going to chuck that one right there, because <laughs> it's jiggling at me. Yeah. Jiggle, jiggle. And the mission immediately after that was uh, the first like big platforming mission. Like, it was an underground tomb thing, Majiggy, and it was a bit like the ones <coughs> in 2 where you had to climb through the cathedrals. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, you have to puzzle those out because you don't know where you're going the first time round. And, of course, the secondary objective is complete in eight minutes. Right, right. right. So, so you then have to speed run what you've worked out. Yeah, exactly. And the trouble is that they're quite long. I mean, eight minutes is quite a long time. Yeah. And that's, that's quite... Uh, I mean, I had no idea how long this section was going to be. And it turned out to be really quite long. And if you didn't know the route, there's no way you'd do it in eight minutes. Mm. And uh, so I worked out the route and did it. And I thought, well, I don't want to do this again. But if I don't do it now, I'll have forgotten the route. Yeah. So I found that a bit... Yeah, so I've just left it. I'll I'll come back to it. These secondary objectives don't sound entirely fun. Well, I wouldn't mind... I don't mind that they're there. It's the way it says you've only done... It says 50%. Mm. It literally says you've only done half the mission, which isn't true, because you've completed it. Well, it's like... Again, going back to Red Dead, it sort of does rank your missions, doesn't it? But, yeah, but they, I never but really they, paid they, attention to Exactly, that. it has no bearing. I like yeah, that. You that's can go cool. back and say, oh, well, I haven't, I haven't yet done any of them with gold ranking, which is irritating. No. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter unless I want the Chivo. Exactly, exactly. But, Whereas clearly there's going to be... I mean, it's telling you as it's going along in this, you are not getting 100%. Enough. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame. So I'm, I'm going to have to make an executive decision not to care about that until the end when mm-hmm. I'm hunting achievements, which is... In that way, I can enjoy the story and what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd, I'd do, probably do the same as yeah. what you're doing. I just couldn't... I wouldn't be able to leave it alone if it's... Um, yeah. You know, there's very few games where I sort of make the decision to say, well, fuck that, I'm not doing that until later. Yeah. It's... Uh, you know, pure, the only ones I do that are out of pure difficulty, like Blur, for instance. It teases you with uh, saying in the tips, it's like, oh, you'll get a little mark next to all the events you can do in hard mode, and there's a uh, um, an achievement for doing everything in the single-player campaign in hard mode. Except hard mode is, for once, exactly what it says on the tin. Frickin' hard. <laughs> it's uh, practically... I've never ma- I haven't managed a single event in Blur on hard mode. It's, it's properly solid. And... Uh, yeah, so so that was the conscious decision right there. I'm not doing that. But then again, Bizarre have always kind of done that, haven't they? They're, they're top targets for their all of the PGR series and <laughs> things like that. That's always insane. It's, in the Platinum. PGR series, it was like semi simulation, where it was like people did get ridiculously hardcore at it. Yeah, true. Whereas but... in Blur, it's more like very hard. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, pretty good so far. Um,. I think I'm enjoying the story stuff, and I think there's going to be loads more of that to come, so I'll probably have a bit. I think I've forced myself into, like, by doing all those combat challenges straight away, I think I've seen some of the most frustrating stuff the game has to offer already, you mm-hmm. see. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to just enjoying it. From, Until the floor from disappears around. on you. <laughs> Does that happen in Assassin's Creed? That happened to me on Assassin's Creed 1. Oh, did it? Okay. It turned out to be a DX10 glitch. But... I haven't seen any bugs. I mean... I, but I remember saying when we were recording the podcast about 2 that it was the prettiest game on the 360. Mm, I've and never I'm not been sure convinced that, by that. I'm honest. not sure that's true anymore. Well, now that we're, we're, now that we're at Brotherhood, I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, maybe Reach is the prettiest game on 360? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. I, I, I don't know. I never really sort of liked the Red aesthetic. Dead. <laughs> Red, <laughs> Dead's, Red Dead's quite nice, but it's not particularly technically no. beautiful, is it? It's, no. Reach is pretty. It's good. technically it's, impressive. Yeah, Reach is not... good in places, but not great in others. It's like when you see the sheer scale of what Reach is actually doing graphically. Yeah. It's it's quite technically impressive, and I've always thought Gears is pretty damn impressive looking. I guess Gears Three will be the benchmark for the three hundred and sixty um, when that comes out. Do you yeah, think? let's hope. Yeah, I think it's about time for a new console generation, though, guys. Get working on the development. Actually, yeah, three three sixty is 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 actually a difficult one to judge pretty games, but I still give the uh, the P- the PlayStation Awards to both, both to Killzone and Uncharted. Uncharted is so good looking, seriously good looking. Uncharted game. three looks amazing. Oh, I can't wait. 
It would be really awesome. And of course, Battlefield 3 looks incredible on PC, which is all they've shown of it, by the way. Yeah. Only PC version. It's yeah. Con- um, well, yeah, I'm only really interested in the PC version. Well, yeah. <laughs> the console offerings have done nothing for me, really. And it just didn't get on with the bad company control scheme in the first one. Yeah. You know, little thing like that, and it just put me off the entire game. And it's... Anyway. So, look, anyway, yeah. look forward to more Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Uh, coverage in the future. And now we're moving on to someone with a lot to talk about, supposedly. Recent <laughs> news! Zachary Brown <coughs> Burgess. I can uh, cough vigorously. Brown. A brown. Brown. What have you been playing, man? Brown. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> have you been playing at Yordig? I need to wake up after my insane now. Yeah, after your, after I was your, saving myself. After yeah. your one hour slumber. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> what did you dream of? <laughs> I dreamt of what I was about to talk about. Uh, oh, oh well, that's, that's less interesting. No, it was like, well, so I guess what we have to start with first is what I actually been playing, rather than the journalistic element of this, which is coming up. I'm intrigued by this. Go on. <laughs> so first of all, we'll get the shit that I've been playing that's just been the same shit that I've been playing for ages out of the way, which is... Uh, there's only really two things I want to mention, even though I've been playing the traditional, like, five. Yeah, the normal. <laughs> so it's like, we don't need to talk about TF2, we don't need to talk about Monday Night Combat, we don't need to talk about... Wait, what was the third one? Oh, Skies, well, Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia. I wanted to mention Worm, because it's got to the same point that I got to in Eve, where it's like... It's the same problem that I think I mentioned about, um... Shit, something else I was talking about on the podcast that I can't remember now. This is going well. It's got to the same point where it's like... You've done everything you want to do in this sort of open world. Right. It's like, you've, I've set myself up, I've like built my house, and it's also enclosures, and I've got like farms and animals and shit, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like, achieved my initial goals, and it's like, what? What now? It's like, I could just carry on grinding forever, and it's like, oh, but now the grinding's slowing down, so it's like, it's less rewarding, because you're not levelling up very quickly, or whatever, and it's oh. like, it's the same thing that happened in EVE, where it's like, the skills become like a month long, or whatever in EVE, and it's like, there's no real incentive to play, apart from at those incredibly tiny segments of time, where it's like, oh, my skill's finished! <laughs> yeah. I can actually do something new now! <laughs> yeah, I know you mean. I've always found that a bit funny, you know, a lot of games try to eke out their kind of you know the new that you've got new stuff to do throughout the entire game, <coughs> and they're the ones that are successful. You know, you look at the Metroids and things like that. That that's why they work. And the Batman, for instance, because it is Bat Metroid, <laughs> Metroid. Yeah. They uh, they they work because they're constantly giving you new stuff to do. Well, it's like how Guild Wars did it, or the later Guild Wars anyway, where it was like in the original Guild, Guild Wars, you had like the level, the twenty level cap. Where you only had 20 levels of levelling, hmm. I guess. But you kind of went through that through the game. But then in like the second and third versions of Guild Wars, the t- you went through the 20 levels virtually before you were done with the, t- t- the tutorial part of the game. Huh. And from then on, it was just like skills and situational stuff. Yeah. So it was like you were, you were no longer grinding anything at all. It was just like... It's work like out how to through, do it. Yeah, get through the game and actually, yeah, you can then you can pick the skill sets and stuff which are infinitely more interesting than the grind. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what's been happening with Worm. It's like, it's the same situation as Eve where it's like, no, there's le- much less incentive to log on any longer. I'll just uh, turn up occasionally to like farm my farms or whatever. Because the way World of Warcraft works <laughs> is you, everyone hits the level cap fairly soon. Yeah. Not really, but, and then it's all... <laughs> it still takes a bloody long time. Yeah, yeah. But then it's all loot and you can never run out of but loot. But it's loot grinding though. It is, but Because it's you... random drops at the end of a thing. <laughs> I know, but the more you do the thing, the more drops <clears throat> you're going to get. So, the more you play, the better. Whereas, with Eve, you just, it's like, wait a month. Well, but you're, you're, you're still not... acquiring... You know, stuff, cash, blueprints. Yeah, but the if loop- you're playing Eve, you're still getting even more stuff. Because the know, skill I happens know. in the background in Eve. Yeah, but I mean, it's not, and the skills are more important than just acquiring currency, aren't they? Really. Whereas in World yeah, of Warcraft, the, the the loot is the skill. Is the skill <laughs> exactly? Because there is no skills. Is there are no skills to learn after level seventy five or whatever it is now? I don't know how it actually works. Maybe that's true. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, that was one. And then the other thing I need to talk about of things I've actually been playing is I also need to talk about Pokemon again. Cause let's do that. Yeah. I finished my epic grind. All right, to get all of your team. <laughs> all up. my team, all my Pokemon I owned up to twenty five, and I've just started reaching the area where the wild Pokemon are twenty five. It's like, man, how good, many Pokemon I'm done. do you have? <laughs> about 
Let me work it out because I'm trying to work out how big the boxes are. It must be about 30 something, I guess. You've trained 30 odd Pokemon up to level 25. Yeah. I suppose they level faster at first anyway. Yeah. But even so, it must have taken a while. I mean, what were you using to grind them against? Who were you fighting? Just wild Pokemon. In the grasslands. About level 20 to 21 ish. And just obviously, around in the tall grass you, get all day. you get the experience share really early on, which helps. Oh, yeah, of course. So you can grind up. Share. Yes. Where it's an item, isn't it? Yeah. You equip it to some a Pokemon, and then they sh- they get some of the experience from. And even though the other Pokemon's fighting, they, they don't have to participate in the battle. Oh, right. So, so as long as they're in your team, they still get a bit of the experience. Yeah, yeah. They like, don't actually have to come out in the battle. A bit like some yeah. of the early Final Fantasy systems, where or in FF thirteen again, <laughs> they have that stupid the, the system in there. Is they don't even have to be part of your party, and they still get the experience. Yeah, yeah, but that's just to keep everyone because in like, Final Fantasy yeah. thirteen, you're not. They're not there most no, of the time. You're, you're you can't jumping, choose to use them. <laughs> no, you're jumping characters all over the place, but everyone gets all the experience. Yeah. Well, that's like Kotal, where everyone just levels equally. And, yeah. and then, and then Mass Effect, or Mass Effect, yeah. where if you go to use a team member you haven't used for ages, like, it's like, look at all these level up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, I heard that, uh, this is a side thing, but I heard that they're putting some of the RPG stuff back into 3, like uh, into Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Uh, like weapon upgrades, but still not as many as in one, but more than in two, which sounds good to me. <laughs> that, that, that does sound good. Anyway. As long as they make the menu sortable and all kinds of... Yeah, as long as they realise... It's yeah. like... There it wasn't w- too much of a problem with it, the system in Mass Effect 1, other than the menu. Well, it's like, in Mass Effect 1, it was fine as a system, with, like, its RPG-ness, apart from the menus made it terrible. So everyone was like, oh, no, this is horrible. And then in Mass Effect 2, they were like... Oh shit, let's take it all out quick. And then everyone was like, why'd you take that out? We quite like that actually, apart from, you know, it's better to have it than not have it, even if it's bad. I, in think, some I, more think, cases. I think we liked the idea of it more than we liked the implementation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I so think, now they've realised that now, and they're like, ah. I think what they're heading towards sounds, about. sounds good, yeah. Sounds good. I just hated the way in Mass Effect you couldn't just hold everything because you really needed to just sell all that shit because you yeah. got so much stuff and none of it was special. And there was an item cap and all that stuff. And there was an item cap, yeah. And it was like, oh, Christ. Anyway. Yeah, so I finished all my... <laughs> just go through your list going Omni-Gel, Omni-Gel, <laughs> Omni-Gel when you're in travel. I finished yeah. all my tons and tons of Pokemon grinding and it was like, okay, like, let's go. But like, I did have one, like, it was one of those awesome moments where, well... I was going to describe this in terms of internet meme, lol, but uh, it was it was one of those moments where everything turned out better than expected, oh. as the meme goes. As it goes. But it was like, I was playing Pokemon quite late on, I was grinding up pretty much the last guy that I had to grind up to level, and I was like, oh man, it's looking like I should really go to sleep. And then the very next fight that I ran into, it was a shiny Pokemon, and it was like, Oh shit, a shiny Pokemon, Jesus! So I was like, and then my guys were so much higher level than it, it was like, I can't even risk attacking it, because I might just kill it in one hit. And you still haven't got that move learned. No, I still haven't found a single, well actually I'll come to that in a sec, about that move. But it was just like, so I can't even risk touching it at all, it's just like, oh well fuck it, I've got like a ton of Pokeballs or whatever, so I just like, use a normal, <laughs> Pokeball, use a normal Pokeball on it, and it captures it first try, and I'm like, oh sweet. Yes. <laughs> Everything went better than expected. Awesome. So it's like, well, that was my one in eight thousand chance of getting a Pokemon, shiny Pokemon. Although considering how much grinding I've done, maybe that wasn't that surprising. <laughs> one in eight thousand, Christ. Ish. Something really? like that. That's that's good. You won the yeah some money. What was that like? Not point not not one two ish percent chance. Yeah, yeah, at least that's low. It's pretty epic. But there you go. So it's like got got my shiny. I'll have some more of those. Do you probably... have a shiny? Or is it a good shiny? Is it like not a... really? <laughs> like a pidgey? Kind of a boring. It's not. A... I was not. Is it, a is it got a hilarious it name? No, it's just a. It couldn't have been because you haven't completed the game. No. Oh, well, I meant the pidgey version. Of it. And the more the more things have been appearing in my phone days, the more it's like, oh man, these are so exactly the same. <laughs> it's like I was tempted just to start naming all the people <laughs> in my team what they actually are rather than what they call now. <laughs> right. It's like I found them like it's a mole thing that has like it, you know it's a ground Pokemon it's a mole it things on the ground and it's got giant claws and I'm like okay this is just Sand Slash rename Sand Slash does that have the move Slash it has Dig oh it's got Dig actually it learns Dig naturally because Dig's no longer a t- uh, HM it's oh, a TM right. <laughs> yeah. which I thought was kind of strange but I guess it's less essential nowadays what did it do gets you out of a cage like an escape room oh yeah it's pretty cool. But yeah, I got that as well. Got the TM for Dig. Are and there also, any new moves like flying? Yeah, there will be. There's like dive or something. Oh. 
And in the because in Diamond and Pearl you had like waterfall where you could go up waterfalls or something. Yeah. And now you have dived to go under the water <laughs> somehow. I don't know what's oh. gonna when that's gonna happen. It'll turn um, into uh what, what's that game and it's all under the sea? Oh <laughs> R- Rapture and stuff. Bioshocks. <laughs> I doubt it. Pokey, that'd be awesome. Thank you, Bioshock. That'd be great. And that'd be like a I'm trying to think of a Pokemon that sort of equates to a big deli. Blastoise. A lot of yeah, big Blastoise or a big mimic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was just like and then, uh, then uh, shortly after, when I was finishing up my grinding, I got the bike. And then just after that, I got fly. And it was like, sweet. Now I can go anywhere really quickly. <laughs> Don't need that bike. <laughs> Thank Christ. Because it's, even with the, because right at the start, you get your running shoes or whatever, which makes you move a lot quicker than walking. It was like, oh, thank God, what running shoes. And then I was like, oh, come on, I'm getting kind of bored of this now. Where's the bike? Where's the bike? And it was like, oh, I got the bike. And it was like, oh, yeah, I got the bike. That's still not quick enough. Where's fly? Oh, there it is. <laughs> We're all good. Do you remember in Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask where you just put, wore the bunny ears constantly because yep, they just yep. made you like 1.5 times faster? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's like through all the dungeons and through everything. Bunny ears. <laughs> but I, I, I've had the same problem with Pokemon again so far, it seems like. I was mentioning before about how the world doesn't seem very big. Where it's like, I did I yeah. did a gym in this in like the fourth town and then it's like, the gym leader from there is like, oh, you need, we need, I'll need to lower the bridge for you so you can get to the next town, or whatever. And so you go out along this route, and it's a really because short the little... the gyms have, like, control of the city limits yeah, pretty for much. some reason? <laughs> they seem to be, like, the central authority of the whole Yeah, world, basically. The gym. Pokemon fighting is government. But then you go out on this really short route, where it's like, oh, you fight, like, a few guys along it, of course. Get to the bridge, which is, like, a screen's width away. Yeah. She's like, lower the bridge. You lower the bridge. You're into the next You're town. In the next town. <laughs> <laughs> and then you basically fight Team Plasma, and then you go to the gym. And it's like, okay, so that's number five done. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and this game doesn't seem like it's going to be very long. Apart from, it must get longer from here on out. I guess I'm length... not even halfway round the map yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, the lengths of the routes don't really have that much bearing in terms of the length of the game, because you spend most of your time grinding. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> or whatever. Well, one does. One has to, to get through. I don't so. think you do in this game, though. That's the thing. Now that I've formed a team of six, I was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to choose six and go. Well, They've been leveling up really grind. quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just like your, yeah, your, your phrasing there. One does grind. <laughs> I just meant everyone has to. <laughs> one must grind the house to Pokemon. My team has been leveling up super fast, and like one Pokemon is still giving me ridiculous amounts of experience. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> it seems, seems like my team is going to get super overleveled, and it'll be really easy. Also, I found a Pokemon that Rob will want. Oh, has it got a good name? Ducklet. <laughs> Shit, yeah. It is actually called Ducklet. Yep. Yeah. Ducklet and to pig. Yep. Yeah. That's unfortunately, my, that's my team sorted. I just um, have an entire team of Ducklet and Tebbigs. Unfortunately, that's the unevolved form of it. It turns into Swanana or something. Swanana? Yeah. What's my name? Which sounds a lot like the. <laughs> <laughs> Swanana. What's my name? It sounds a lot like the. Um, God, whatever see. they were called in Viva Pianza or whatever. Viva they were called Swananas in that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I've yeah. just stolen the name. So, yeah, Ducklets. Can you make a swan pig? <laughs> that would be the best reference ever. <laughs> yeah. You breed a tef- tefig and a swanana and you get like something fucked up. Some horrible... I, I, I totally wish they'd put some of that in because that was the funniest bit about Viva Piñata really was trying to figure out how to make that fucked up thing. <laughs> yeah, we cheated though. Well, we didn't really cheat, did we? We sort we? of looked at the guide eventually. Did we? I thought we sort of... We had an idea of... We found, what you we had found to the, do. We found enough of the clues, I think. Yeah, so. we had an idea of what, what, how it was going to work. We just couldn't get it to happen. No, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, wait, what? And then we looked it up and it was like, oh. So how evolved is your starting Pokemon? Is it level still only two? second level? All right, okay. It's like level 35-ish now. I just want to go back to Viva Pinata for a second. Yeah. It's like, when you think about that game, it's, it's pretty ridiculous what Rare have made there. Because it's like, it's the least casual, casual game I can think of. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's actually super hardcore because you have to be, you have to be like constantly doing shit. Yeah, you have to be constantly <laughs> doing shit. You have to be really focused in what you're trying to achieve because you can go off kilter for a bit. You'll miss your chance. Yeah, and it's it's really and there's a lot to it. And, you're, and you out, have like limited out, space. Yeah, where you have to like. You have to work out, you, know, you have to use your land efficiently yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and it has like the Pokemon ideal of gotta catch them all, doesn't yeah. it? And things like that. But actually catching them all has some totally and utterly bizarre 
and like you'd never fucking find it ways of doing things like how to create the multi-headed snakes or something where you have to some of them you have to poke the egg while it bounces super high just as it's about to hatch or something <laughs> yeah and it's like what the shit i would never have figured that out Unless, i mean there could there might be a clue to that somewhere like there was for the swamp some thing of them yeah i mean the, the game does say you could like do things with the eggs and things like shake them and things like that to I believe, to tr- try and get into them, or you could just smash them with your shovel and stuff like that. And yeah. it's like, but it never became totally obvious when you'd want to do that, because if you did that to most of the eggs you got, they'd just die. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, I'm never doing that again, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, people are pinning out a crazy game. Um, <laughs> the second one is bit. I played the bit of the second one. I didn't yeah. get into it quite so much, because I haven't had quite so much time on my hands <laughs> of uh, from, from when I was playing the original, but... Uh, if you're tempted, definitely start with the second one. It's quite a lot more balanced. And, uh, it doesn't, yeah, because the start of the first one is so mental, isn't it? It's like here's a creature, here's another creature, here's a creature, and you're like bombarded with things for like the first couple of hours. It's just a constant information, like yeah, like spree of of updates and things happening, and most of it happens outside of what you're doing because the garden's kind of living, so shit just happens. Yeah, and it's like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and then. It's a bit better in the second one. They've calmed it down, mm. like the start of it, and it's uh yeah. But anyway, a bit of an offshoot. Back to back to Pokemon. I just it's just like a, you know a game I played that's <laughs> Pokemon ish. Yeah, similar. I'm glad they made a second one because they easily couldn't have, you know. Well, more people than yeah. Yeah, it was, it was it was a good concept, but one that was fundamentally flawed in a way because yeah, so the problem with the second game is it didn't do it didn't it, it wasn't like the sequels to Pokemon. It didn't really for 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 me that was why I didn't play it that much because it didn't really expand very much. It had some refinements. It was more of a refinement to the original game rather than an actual sequel. Yeah, which was a bit of a shame. So I didn't play it. It's, it's like <laughs> yeah. I've done all this shit once before. I'm not doing it again. Yeah, I see. kind of thing. Which is a shame. But yeah, interesting concept. They should probably come back with it again at some point, maybe. Connect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're digging holes for plants and shit using Connect. That would be pretty funny. I wonder how that would work. But yeah, if you're listening, Rare, which you're not. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> they must be heavily... I mean, they did all the Avatar stuff for the Xbox. They must be. They must have a Connect development kit and stuff. Presumably. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think there was anything else much to say about Pokemon. There was one more thing. I can't remember what it was. Oh, there's been a lot of talk about the ridiculous global trading stuff. Yeah. How? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, the global trading works if you if you go in there and you have a Pokemon and you put it up for some reasonable trade. Normally, it gets filled within a day because the reasonable ones go really quickly. Right. Because it's just like yes, but then, then there's every time. It's like, I'm not sure how it works, but I think if you put up something for trade... Right. It should add, you know, you can search for people who are trading things. But if you do a search, all you see is totally unreasonable shit, where it's like, I want a level 100 everything, or every legendary Pokemon for this shit, for this, like, random level 1 Pokemon that you're searching for. So you never see any reasonable trades when you're searching. So I think what happens sometimes is when you put things up there... It fulfills instantly. It just like because someone else has put up something that matches yours, even though it's not at the same time. Mm, right. So it just those those ones always get fulfilled actually pretty quickly. So it still works right. <laughs> as a way to trade stuff. But there's the, no point browsing. You can't find. Yeah, you can't really browse for stuff. You have to know what's reasonable in advance. But apparently, all those unreasonable trades are actually just people. Glitching the system to like clone Pokemon all the time. <laughs> oh, so they just the detritus. Because actually, when I was thinking them. about it, it's really obvious how you do that. Because it's like when you go up to the. It's not it, like the old transfer bug where you disconnect. Well, yeah, it's so it's sort of like that. Because you go up to like the trade counter or whatever to log on to the online thing, right? And before you do that, you save, right? So it saves your data. Then you go in. Then you select your Pokemon or whatever and upload it. But. Th- then when you come out again, it doesn't force you to save. So at that point, you turn off, turn back on. It's gone back to your save before you went in there, so you've still got your Pokemon. Mm. Then you go back in there again, download the Pokemon you put up there, and then you've got a clone. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that's really obvious. How did they not... Why? It's like, fools. So each Pokemon doesn't have some kind of internal unique ID that says this is this Pokemon. Not as far as I can yeah. work out. I mean, I mean, maybe there is some kind of control, but I, 
that looks like how the ov- I don't know if it actually works, but I assume because yeah, that, that be it's so it. obvious. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would be what would ha- be happening, surely. So, but why would there be tons, tons of stuff left on the marketplace if they were just going and immediately down- re-downloading? Because it, it doesn't have you know, no matter how immediate it is, while it's still a popular game, It'll there will still that. be tons of them. Oh, I see. Presumably, if lots of people are doing it, mm, I suppose there has been some suggestion. Someone was saying on online or something that um, <laughs> people with with more hacking power have been hacking Pokemon to fit those trays that are meant to be impossible, like oh. turning a magic carpet into a view or something, and then <laughs> stealing people's Pokemon to <laughs> make it unfulfillable. Oh, clever! This is like lols. <laughs> Screw you, hackers! We're gonna hack you creeping, more. Isn't it? It's just creeping. <laughs> Quite funny though. Yes, and so, I don't think of like I don't. I don't think I've known many DS games to have a, a, an unhacked online element. No. To be honest, every time the, they do the it, the Sonic they ones are freaking hilarious, aren't they? Because point zero 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 one. Yeah, they, they, they come up with the smallest possible time that they could fit in the leaderboards, and so sort of the <laughs> the Sonic leaderboard system is totally fucked, and it has been in every single iteration it's come out. But I think even the one for Sonic Four on. Um, Xbox Live Arcade is <laughs> fucked because yeah. of cheaters, and it's uh... any game that has time trial. I don't think I've ever seen anything that doesn't has no, 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 actual void. There's definitely like you know lap times in racing games, for instance, are often unfucked. Sometimes, but you still get them occasionally. Oh, right? every now and then, yeah, <laughs> but they're not nearly as bad as like most other sort. Of, well, like, or maybe they were like trial. better moderated, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because <laughs> clearly Sega with like the Sonic, you know, they just set it up and then just left it. <laughs> yeah. We'll just leave the server running. But you'd have thought like the servers would have some reasonable cutoff point. It's like, oh, this time is less than five seconds. I don't think it's possible to get through a level in five seconds. So no, it's true. like there should be like a theoretical. If you were to just travel with Sonic in a, in straight, a straight line <laughs> at its maximum possible speed, then that should be the server's cutoff time. It's true. like, sorry, you've broken this, and then, and then a little bit of leeway just in case. There's like a trick, but. Uh, you know, to, to glitch it down to one millisecond. But you don't know that that you don't know whether it's literally a hack or a glitch. Because if it's a glitch and they've legitimately found a way to make it do that without having to hack it, then it's <laughs> a different thing. I guess, but they still shouldn't probably allow it. No, because it's like you're cheating. <laughs> so no. So no. Yeah. So I guess that's the thing I've actually been playing now. Seriously, fuck you. I did. Lo- I did manage. <laughs> In fact, you've ruined, the, you've ruined an interesting mechanic on the Sonic games. I hate you. <laughs> well, on every game. The fact that I finally finished grinding on Pokemon. I mean, I spent a long time doing that. I, I've played a lot <laughs> that of Pokemon. That sounds really dodgy, sorry. I don't normally put those things out. Finish grinding on Pokemon. No. <laughs> yeah, carry on. Don't do that. <laughs> no. It was a proper pilot swine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I wonder if there's going to be one of those. Oh, I guess Teffing is just the fan. It's the pig Pokemon. Yeah. Can't yeah. have a final swine. Oh, you could do later. Well, I mean, um, ideally, we want to get one of those. I want a crazy... I'll pile of swine to my Tepig team. Yeah. I just want a crazy pseudo Rudo equivalent, them, because yeah. what type was that? Rock. Have... Tree. Rock, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rock tree. It was rock type, and it was a tree. I bet it'd be rock, rock grass nowadays or some shit, because every goddamn thing has two types, and it's really fucking pissed me off now. Yeah. Whereas, like, you get the bird, the first bird Pokemon, or, you know, the Pidgey equivalent, that's normal flying, which makes it suck, because flying... I've never understood yeah. normal as a type. Yeah, it's a weird well, type. I mean, yeah. It was just a generic... I mean, Yancey was complaining, did you see yeah, that? Yeah, flying electric. he was, electric. like, flying electric. That was always <laughs> the classic annoying one. Like, even in the first game, but you didn't see it straight away, because it was only that legendary... What, Zapdos? That was Zapdos. only electric, though, originally, of course. Yeah, but they made But when it... they introduced the dual-type system... It was flying electric. But it just means that, like, yeah, ground is useless against a flying... Apart from you have various moves that can, like, you know... Make not flying Pokemon susceptible to ground attacks. There's a various sets of moves that do that now. Well, isn't there something even weirder than that, where certain moves have certain types attached to them, so your Pokemon can do out of type moves? Well, yeah, a lot of that's been turning up quite a lot too. Because so, so what's been really annoying me is like, it's like everything has pointless dual types. It's like the Pidgey thing that I have that you get right at the start is normal flying. And flying is super effective against fighting, but fighting is super effective against normal, so it totally ruins the whole point of having a flying Pokemon. It's like, fuck! 
So, so, so a normal flying then against that type, then then just mash each other out, or, do, or are they always super effective against each other? It like if it's super effective against one of the two types, then it goes back to being normally effective. Okay, basically. So you have to be super effective against both types. No, or? if you're attacking, you only have to be super. It, if one of them's super effective, and one of them's not effective, it yeah. averages out to zero. To oh, normal. I see. I get it. No, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But then it's, and then I was like, I saw another thing. I was like, oh look, it's it's a grass Pokemon. I kind of need one for my team or something. But it's grass normal. It's like fucking normal. <laughs> you bastards. What's normal good against then? Normal is what only even mean really. <laughs> normal is only really useful it's just a against. Holdover, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Cat noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's only really useful against ghosts because ghosts can't hit normal at all. Right. So that was the only reason to have normal, basically. Hmm. I can't remember. There is some other... I don't think normal is effective against anything, if I remember correctly. Maybe steel is super effective against normal. I can never remember. All the newer types I totally blank out on. I can't remember, like, steel or ice. It's like, what the fuck are they effective against? Or dark. (laughs) I'll play dark. I can never remember. And I'm just like, I have to just guess. (laughs) Maybe it doesn't work. Dark is like shadow in magic or something. Yeah. Goddamn. But then it's... So I'm... Been through, uh, and the other thing is, yeah, you do get a lot of off-type moves, which is really bizarre. It's like my f- my electric zebra thing has a fire move. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> because I'll use that. And so it's like if I go, if I'm playing with like the electric, it's like electric isn't very effective against grass, except I've got this fire move, so I can totally own grass as well. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> Surely that's almost like one of the ultimate setups in a way, is to have all your Pokemon like cross type in their moves every now and then because well, you can see so you don't have to replace them. if it was like something that you could do something that you'd do that you would do as a tactic like mm. if you were using a training machine to teach them the move but they just learn them naturally yeah. <laughs> it's like electric Pokemon should learn electric moves why is this flame one here what are you doing so and that then... happens for like everything it's like my starter Pokemon has it's a flame type well no actually it's flame fighting it's okay. fire, fire fighting is the is the type? It's a firefighter. It has fire. It has fighting. It, has, it then it also has had big red truck. Uh, no. It's had no, firefighting, normal, dark, <laughs> and rock. And it's like what? <laughs> These moves are just totally randomly typed. That's really it's fire strange. moves. But it's just where's flame for her? Give me that. I'll You'll be done eventually when you evolve and shit. Yeah, that level seventy or whatever. Get flame for that wheel you need. Yeah. Also, I got someone traded me. I was look. I got a random trade folk one. Off well, of trade, which had like several technical machines moves learned on it at level one. It was like a psychic Pokemon that already had psychic. Oh. <laughs> at level one, it was like wow. I don't even have the technical machine to teach it that, but someone else had, and then traded it. I'm not sure why. It was like okay, sweet. Because sometimes they learn moves from like their breeding, like their parents pass down moves. Right. But psychic isn't one of the ones that can be. It had to have been put on it by a machine. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? Bizarre. Random. But it's pretty sweet. Is it still four moves each per Pokemon? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. When you, I know, I knew this all along, but when you talk about putting moves on them with machines, it still sounds. <laughs> it sounds even less. Animal friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like going back to the whole thing of keeping animals cooped up in bars. Oh, and that was the other thing I wanted to say about Pokemon that really pisses me off. In all the games they've ever done, they've never used the actual Pokeball effect with like the red beam that comes out and sucks them up. It's like, why? <laughs> That's mean, the most obvious. What do you mean from the cartoon? Yeah. yeah. It's the most obvious thing ever about Pokeballs and how they look. Is the weird red beam thing. But it never does that in any of the games. Well, other than the fact that they're red and white and have a button. That's the most obvious thing of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> but that's not even true, because as soon as you go off normal Pokeballs, they start changing all random And the stupid size-changing thing that they do as well. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> but god damn it, why not the red beam thing? That would look so what, what does awesome. happen? Well, they get, every ball has a different weird effect, but it's generally like a... Big smoke glowy, cloud. <laughs> glowy, like, beams come out of it, and then the Pokemon just goes, whoop, <laughs> out of its tiny sprite. Into oh, out, out of it, yeah, but how do they go in? The opposite. Oh. It just plays the same effect again, oh. and they go, whoop. Because <laughs> they sort of, 
they use the red beam to go in, don't they, in 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 the cartoon? But then, sort of like big glowy effect to come out. Well, they, it's kind of a red it's like a fireball effect. that comes out when they're going out because the ball opens and they go. Boom. Well, they do that in Smash Brothers, don't they? Uh, they it's not yeah. it's not red, but it's sort of like a, a particle thing that sort of sweaves around a bit and goes. Yeah. Yes. And then you get the sparkly effect as well. Yeah. So the the Pokeball travelling through the air has the particle effect. <laughs> even, even that's not the same, is it? Oh, well, you know what? Fuck it. The cartoon's probably wrong. Let's put it that way. Because <laughs> the games are the, the, more, the most consistent. But the games, it, the games are consistently consistent per type of Pokeball. But there's so many different types of Pokeball that there's millions of different effects. And I'd be happier if it was just that one red effect. It's like much more <laughs> you cool just, looking. You just like the red. Well, maybe one of them should just have it, just to repeat Zach. Like Master Ball or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, shit, now we've better move on before I run out of time. Do your demos. About my, yeah, my journalistic intentions. Do it. Oh, yeah. Where I was like... Do we need, like, news broadcast music or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not do that. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. News. <laughs> well, well, it's basically, I was thinking... This was basically, la- like, two weeks ago on Monday... Because I thought we, because I thought we might get another podcast in before two weeks passed again. Because I was a fool, but I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, this time. clearly I'm not going to play anything apart from you know those same four games that I've been playing continuously for the last month or three or whatever. So it's like, god damn it, I'll be hardcore and actually download some new demos of games and like journalize journalism. <laughs> <laughs> journalize them. I'm going to journalize it all up in this place. <laughs> 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 up in this, up in this cast, man. <laughs> Okay. So I downloaded, I went onto Steam and basically got what turned out to be pretty much the four most recent things on there. And it was like, because then I went, I was going backwards through the list after I'd done the first four. And I was like, and then I went backwards through the list. And then I was like, I've got the Red Faction Griller. And that was like September last year. It's like, apparently not many demos come out any longer. (laughs) Which, you know, is true, I guess. Oh, strange. So I so I downloaded the top four and I, now I can talk about all of them. Go for it. So let's. Well, I'm going to start from the, one. start from the ones that are really short to talk about and progress up the scale of length <laughs> okay. towards the ones that are longest to talk about. Okay, go on. Because the shortest one to talk about is Crisis Two. Yeah. Because <laughs> I downloaded it and it's it's an EA game, right? So it must use their login system at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. But it wouldn't accept... Ooh. Yeah, they're shitty dogs. It wouldn't accept my goddamn EA username, the one that I use for Battlefield or whatever. And I, But it, it knew that my email address there had been used. Oh, no. So I was like, oh, wait, what? Okay, so I, so I send a reset password thing to that email address. And get that. Go to the website, log in, reset password, type a new password. It's like, okay, that's fine. But then... In the game, yeah, it wants a username and a password, not an email, not address. an email address and a password. So I was like, okay, this is not going to work. So I had to go. So I go to the Crisis Two website or like My Crisis or whatever the fuck it's called. God, <laughs> it does sound <laughs> so wrong. Oh, I am a Crisis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Went to that. Bring out the drop down, drop down box thing. Type in email address. Type in password. Hit login. It logs in. It says I'm logged in. Yeah. Click on button to go to profile. Load new new page where the profile should be. It thinks I'm logged out again, and it won't let me log in on the profile page. What the and hell? So maybe it's just Internet Explorer. Probably is. Probably not. <laughs> but it wouldn't let me get. To, it wouldn't realise that I'd logged in between the page transitions. So I, was, I couldn't actually get to my profile to set up a username. So I, in the end, I was just like, okay, right, fuck this. I'll just make a new account on my on, on one of my other email addresses because you can, you know, make a new yeah. account with a username at that point. Yeah. So I was like, okay, set up a new, set up a new username on my other email. What, in the account. game? Yeah, in the game cool. login screen. So I make that, finally log in, and then it's like, you're on a strict NAT firewall and you can't see any servers at all. And, the, and this is a multiplayer only demo. And I'm like, Okay, this is apparently not going to work then. <laughs> what the? <laughs> so I'm, I'm like pissed around for like an hour or something, fiddling with router settings and firewalls, and, and eventually just like, I was like, okay, I'll turn my router <laughs> firewall off and turn Windows firewall on instead. You just swap through the code walls. <laughs> <laughs> swap my firewalls over so I'm still protected, but my Windows instead of my, my yeah. router or whatever. And that didn't work either. And then in the end, I was just like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> so basically, Crisis 2, what I have to report, nothing at all, so I didn't even fucking see it. Okay. Um, uh, the, the Crisis 2 login problems are quite well known and widespread. Are they legendary? Even, okay. <laughs> even on people I know who have the full game, they have issues in the sense that they will log in 
into the game and it will refuse their login the first time they do it but then they do it again and then it works so it's like but it always does it the first time they log in something goes wrong so you have to it wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't a multiplayer only demo because yeah. I might be able to see something well, of the, the game demo, I'm not even sure the demo is a proper demo I think it's the beta code yeah probably so it's um, it's not actually a proper representation but yeah poor, poor old Free Radical you know it, I, it from what I know it's the Free Radical guys that have been working on the multiplayer component it is yeah Crisis. Crisis so UK it's, um, it's uh it, it's unfortunately a bit, Mr. Yeah. Barbary. and uh, Dr. Doak mm-hmm. and all those guys <coughs> sorry you're yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. probably not their fault though is it well, I, could, I don't know we, we just don't know <laughs> but they're, they're in charge I, I, I fear for them right now <laughs> So that sucks. That was yeah, a waste of several gigabytes of downloads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So couldn't, I got rid of that. You couldn't even see Tep Pretties. Well, it had like an intro video where it was telling you about how to play the game or whatever, so I guess okay. I saw what it theoretically looks like. <laughs> what, rendered in-game? Well, as like, you know, behind the back, showing you this guy running around and shooting things. Or whatever. Oh, I see. Right. So, yeah. And some first person. Mm. So it's okay. like, this is what it theoretically looks like. And is it pretty? <laughs> Nah. Well, that's only the multiplayer, it's probably not. It was only a video as well, so I guess that's also not very representative. Oh, so it's not even rendered? No. Ah, oh, suck. Mm. Never so, mind. Just like, never mind. Enough of that. Screw that, moving on. Screw Crisis 2. Sorry. <laughs> and then, second, the second one was Dragon Age 2. Oh. And I was like, okay, download that, install that, and then go in, and then it was like, uh, I can't remember how that actually started. Didn't, there was more login, of course, because the EA again. Boom! And this time it worked. <laughs> so with, like, wait, with which? Your original with my reg- With my regular one, yeah. Oh, cool. So I was just like, oh, thank God. She didn't have to like... Because that works on Mass making... Effect 2, and it's basically exactly the same system as Mass Effect 2. Yeah, it's Bioware. <laughs> ah, of course, yeah. So it's more... Is it... So is it more the Bioware login rather than the EA login? Or it's really hard to tell because it's all... Because Bioware had their own... Had, yeah, because Bioware had their own... Sort yeah, of server and stuff. Don't they? Yeah. But yeah. Like the service network and stuff. Mm. So that worked. Well, you know, it's it's it's, it's bigger than that because Cerberus Network was just kind of the name they gave yeah. to the Mass Effect Two, Mass version of two it. DLC sort of portal. Yeah. But the uh, yeah, because Bi- yeah, Bioware in general have their yeah they have their own their own Steam essentially, but just for Bioware. Well, that'll <laughs> be expanded when the Republic launched. I suppose that'll be like the <laughs> equivalent of Battlenet, maybe. won't it? Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Which again seems yeah. pointless in the face of Steam. So I got into this one okay. Uh, the first thing that happened was as soon as it started running, it ran really shitty. And, uh, cause I'd set everything to, up to maximum. And it was like, why about, is this running so shit? And you <laughs> heard about this on the bomb I had heard about yeah. the problems, but I didn't realise it was gonna be this bad. Okay. It was like chopping well below 20 frames per second on your monster constantly computer. on my awesome computer with everything up to maximum. And then I was, I oh, know actually it's not even maximum, cause the demo limits you to only high and not very high. Oh, and it was presu- still horribly choppy. <laughs> presumably it cut down the packet, the, the demo package. Yeah, presumably. Yeah. But then I was like, oh sense. man, this is still terrible. So I was like, turn it down to medium. <laughs> Fuck. So got it, then it was like, okay, well, now it runs fine, whatever, don't really care. <laughs> I'm not really, really very invested in this at this point, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> so I go into the thing, and you know, play the game, and then the very first thing that crosses my mind is that it becomes immediately incredibly annoying, because it drops you straight into some combat, of course, where it's just like, you know, meet enemies, which Hack and slash. Kill them. <laughs> They're totally not dangerous at all or anything, and you have some skills, it's like a teaser. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, is one in of the those. feature or whatever. Like in, uh, the best one of those ever was that Force Unleashed one where you start as Darth Vader, and then <laughs> yeah. you get busted down to Lamo guy. Anyway. So, you, so you're killing these enemies or whatever. But the very first thing that immediately completely pissed me off about it was the ridiculous control scheme of the whole fighting system and everything, because it's, it's like, you know, it's positional, so it's like you run up to the enemies, obviously, because you've got sort of, you stab them or whatever. Right. But you only really have to click on the enemy, and then you run over there. That's right click to, like, a- attack a target, mm. generically. And then you mash the number buttons to trigger all your skills, you know, sort of World of Warcraft style thing, or whatever. Yeah. But, you, you, because you, you're doing that, but when you're moving through the game normally, you're WASD or whatever. Right. But as soon as you enter combat, if you've right clicked on an enemy to start attacking them, to target them basically, yeah. If you press any of the WASD key buttons, it breaks your movement and you just stand there. <laughs> right. So even if you're right up next to an enemy and you've got them targeted and selected with the right mouse button, if you tap one of your movement keys because you're just like trying to shift your position slightly or whatever, you just stop attacking, just stand there. <laughs> it's like what? 
So you have to, so you have to start the attack yourself. Yeah, by but clicking again. Doesn't that kind of happen in most in that control scheme in general? I still remember that was how Guild Wars handled it. No, Guild Wars auto attacks as long as you've got a type statement. I don't. I didn't think it did. Wait, maybe you, not. Yeah, as soon as you move, it kind of break cancels anything you've got doing. Well, okay, maybe maybe it is similar to Guild Wars, except for it's. You feel like you should still be using the WSD all the time to move around the battlefield. It feels third like, person. yeah, because it's third person and because it's semi-positional. Like you're actually like, say you want to do a sweep move which hits all the enemies around you. You're like, you want to get into position for that, but yeah. that breaks your auto attacking. Did you ever play Jade Empire? A little bit. Because what's because what? How does that compare? Because that was an RPG. I can hardly remember. But it had like a a third person action. Fighting, yeah. didn't it? That was more more action RPG than RPG. You know what I mean? You you took control of the fights more hands on. Yeah, but the uh, Dragon Age Two is is more hands on than Dragon Age Origins, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like a new fighting system, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I don't play know. Origins either. But so that was the first thing that annoyed me. But then the second thing that annoys me is like, in order to look, you know, view the battlefield because it's third person, like from behind you. So you're sort of in the bottom middle of the screen. Your character guy, yeah, the normal mm. spot, the normal kind of place for third person. But if you want to rotate the view to see, you know, different angles or see what's going on, you left click and drag. But if you left click on you, it doesn't fucking work. Oh. <laughs> and you're taking up the middle part of the screen where you start clicking and dragging from. It's like, oh. And if you've just been right clicking on an enemy very close to you, and then you try left click to drag to view, that doesn't fucking work. So what does left clicking on you do? <laughs> Nothing. Oh. It just doesn't. It just doesn't let you rotate the camera. Oh well, that's that's yeah, that's, that's pretty inexcusable. So that was terrible as well. And so the, then I was like, you know, we did this first fight, and it's a bit of story cutscene. Then you actually start, you know, start from the start of the story, and you're escaping something, and then you're talking to yourself with friends, and you've got the Mass Effect little talky wheel thing. That, Oh, yeah. tells you the different responses and the middle response is like the cheesy sarcastic response like, <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt but we should probably run away from these bastards <laughs> <laughs> awesome. that's cool so you're doing that and then I was like and it's you're kind of running down well in this first bit anyway you're running down this corridor or whatever and periodically some enemies will be coming the other way and then you sort of meet up in a semi open area and it's like that's quite well done for like instant transition to battle because there's no it's not it's a transition. Like, yeah. There's, there's, there's no thing. stage, it's just yeah. done in the world. Yeah, it's just done That's in the cool. world as you run up to them. Um, so you, I was running up to these guys and I was attacking them, and then I died. And that's actually kind of confusing, because when you die, your character di- you know, your character runs out of health. Right? You go down, but then you take control of one of the other ones. Yeah. And yeah. I was suddenly, I was it's I like, I don't know what any of these moves are. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So suddenly you're just someone totally different, and you're trying to attack things and... Because surely that's what exactly what you're trying to avoid in Dragon Age is having control of anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Because you play as your guy, surely. You, well, I mean... I don't, I don't know enough. It's know not like... Because, I mean, in Mass Effect, if, if the same thing happened in Mass Effect, it would it would be the same effect. But, I mean, which is to say that it wouldn't actually be that much of a problem. Because everyone sort of has vaguely well, the same skills yeah, and they're yeah, all and the same the majority level. majority of the controls would be... Similar. Stand, yeah, yeah, it would be your standard shooter affair. It's a little more varied in Dragon Age where it's like, I became a mage and I had just been melee and it was like, I don't know how to work ranged attacks or anything. <laughs> don't know how to target spells. It creates a, like, you point with the cursor and it creates an area of effect circle or whatever. And then you fire the magic at it. And then I did that, did another fight and then I ran off a hill and it crashed. <laughs> and then I was like, right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> Stability's not the strong point of these. I think it was probably about to go into a cutscene, so I, you know, it crashed, and then I was like, oh, I can't be asked. I'm not really interested in it, so I was done. My journalism didn't keep me going any further. So you're not interested in that game, then? <laughs> no. It just kind of annoyed me with its ridiculous controls. I wasn't interested before I saw it. Well, so. no, that too. Well, in theory, it's Mass Effect with swords, but in practice, it's not, really, is it? It's just... Not interesting. It's because third person cover based shooter works, but third person melee attacking maybe doesn't as well. As well. I think I don't know if I've said this. Third person running. run up in guy's face. <laughs> or, or how else would you do run up in guy's face? You, you wouldn't. Like, <laughs> that was the thing. I think I'm more interested in playing Origins now, the first one, than I am in two. Yeah, it does sound like I never a better played game, it. and the yeah. be- and drag- the first one is set more outdoorsy, whereas the second one is supposedly set more in cities, with the landscape being a bit bland, and occasionally goes back to the whole repetition of areas yeah. problem from Mass Effect One. Oh, yeah, don't and want that. And it's like, 
Hang on a minute. <laughs> you learned your lesson from Aspect 2 and then unlearned it again. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Bit of a regression. You did what Yoda advised and unlearned. <laughs> well, anyway. So that was the end of that. Okay. It crashed, I installed it. That was another several gigs done. <laughs> yep. So now we're on to game three after or this. four. Um, game three. Yeah. I'm not sure which order to talk about these two, last two in because actually they, I spent a lot more time with the last two than I did with even the first two. Okay. So it's significantly. I guess we'll talk first because the second one is more important. Well, I hope we talk first. You know, if you were to just do it in mime, that would be a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it. <laughs> Carry on. Um, talk first about... I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess what game it was you were talking about by that particular mime you did. Where you just that mime didn't, over over didn't tell you anything at all. No, okay. Well, could you mime it now? Could we play, like, guess the Picture game charades? No, come no on. I don't think time. I can come up with a mime for this, but it was... The next game was a much less AAA title. <laughs> it was one of the more shittier games on Steam, but it was that weird. I mentioned it before on the podcast, and I kept saying that I probably should play it. But it was, it's that weird re- sort of reimagining of Dungeon Keeper called Dungeons. Surprisingly oh. enough, <laughs> okay. Ah, no, I saw I, I saw the review of this. I haven't heard about this, but it's a really kind of weird. <laughs> It's not really dungeon keepery. <laughs> I guess that's the first thing. Apart from the fact that you're playing an evil guy and you have minions or whatever, you know, what is it evil like, dungeon. <laughs> you know, like every other evil dungeon ever. Yeah, made. well, the premise. Well, is all the of same. those two games. Yeah, like Dungeon Keeper One and Dungeon Keeper Two and Overlord. <laughs> yeah, sort of. I guess that was less dungeony. <laughs> so a similar premise, but different mechanics completely. Sort of. You still have like the underground mine out tiles, build passages. Instead of imps, you have goblins. You dig the rock and right. gold, and they're and like stuff. squares of squares, yeah, squares of tiles or whatever. Right. Dig, dig tunnels, but it all sounds the same. Yeah, the way to the way you have to sort of think about dungeons, I realise afterwards, is it's sort of like tower defence. Yeah, tower defence in its gameplay because what that makes you, sense. What, DK was always a bit like that. Though. Yeah, well, not well. DK was more like a big melee at, at some point. <laughs> yeah. It was like build up your forces and then just mash them together. <laughs> If it was better, it would have been about tunnelling enemies in the way you Yeah, want like, like trapping them or whatever. Yeah, heading them towards the... But this is much more like tower defence, because what you have to do is, like, you get the hero entrances where the heroes go in. And the idea is that in order to... You want the hero's soul energy, right? Which is basically one of the free currencies of the game. I want your soul. You have, like, gold and soul energy and... Uh, Impressiveness or something. <laughs> but it had better not be clerks. So you want you want these souls from the heroes, but if you were to just like kill the hero immediately, you don't get very much. That's so what you have to sketches. do is you have to construct your dungeon in such a way that the heroes become happy from visiting your dungeon, which they become happy by basically killing shitty minions ah, for like experience points. So you lull and then, them and then stealing all your gold. <laughs> <laughs> so you lull them into a false sense of security. Yeah, yeah, so what you have to do is like... It's you... like they're, they're Link and they're gradually getting through the dungeon, getting more and more awesome, and then at the end you crush them. Yeah, basically. So, what, so <laughs> it's like it's kind of like tower defence in that aspect, because it's like you have the hero gate, and then the fi- sort of the end point of the route that the heroes travel is like your gold piles, and you can build various types of gold piles that are, you know appeal to different... And lately, it's like sometimes they want to visit multiple gold files because <laughs> just one gold file is not enough. Whatever. So you, really feel, you have these gold files, and then basically they travel from the hero gate to the gold file, and then you can like divert them by putting other interesting items around. Like, oh, look at this weird candlestick. I think I'll go over here. Do they have this. like personalities in the sense that they carry some level of, you know, some rudimentary emotion? Like yeah, ba- basically, and... where it's like different classes of heroes will go, will be attracted to different things. Like the mage classes will go through the library before getting to your gold That's file. That's kind of cool, actually. So it's like sort of tower defense. Yeah. And then the way your minions work is you put like you build like a pentagram of that type of enemy on the floor, and they just spawn out of it at an interval. So okay. the, like the hero comes in, kills them all, walks past, and then they respawn, and then maybe the hero comes back and kills them all again, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. So you, you're like you're guiding them in to the walls of your gold file, and through when they're fighting and picking up gold, their happiness meter goes up, and then when it's full, you just burn them. <laughs> Because well, they become less effective when they're happy. Or... No, you have. To, that's how you get their soul energy. Oh, I see. Yeah, I get it. You build up their soul energy by ma- by making them happy, and then you murder them right at the end, and then steal their soul energy from them by putting them in prison until they die. <laughs> that actually sounds way cool. Is it good? It's it's sort it of sounds like, kind of like a puzzler in its own way. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it does have that sort of tower defense puzzle aspect, but I mean, it's not amazing. 
It's just a, it's, you a know, nice idea. <laughs> a sort of vaguely boring game. It's okay. It's not, you know, it's not amazing or anything. Mm. It's just like, so I, I don't think I, I don't think I got designed my dungeons very well, which probably didn't help. <laughs> Because it was just like, I just had, like, here's the hero gate, and then the gold is right here, and then so, I just filled the corridor with minions. So other than a refinement of the sort of DK principles, what's its USP? You know, what's, what's, what, is, what has it got to sort of grab you more than anything else? I don't think it really has any... And the way you, like... Is that unique selling point? Yes. I've not come across that. <laughs> I had to use ESP to work out what that USP is. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so it's like... The whole idea with, like, the minions and the tower defense and everything, that that would probably be okay, except in order to kill the heroes at the end when you've made them happy, you have to come in. I mean, you're an actual character. <laughs> it's like your dramatic killing a hero sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did a knife action at the same time. Anyway. It's like you're an actual character. You're just, like, the dungeon lord or whatever. All big right. dude. And so you're, you're like, the guy who has to come in and finish them off at the end. Oh, Because okay. okay. your yeah, minions are never going to do it, because they shouldn't. They're basically cannon fodder to make the heroes happy. Right. Oh, so I it, see. It, oh, that's even more genius. Well, except it's not really, because then it becomes really annoying to play. Oh, because all you're you doing, have to grind. Yeah, you have to be there all the time to keep killing them, or they yeah. escape with all your shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's kind of... It, you, you kind of wish there were actually some properly decent minions. Or like a way you could trigger high-powered minions to appear somehow and kill them <laughs> at some point. Yeah, maybe even if it was a manually triggered trap or something, where like they would just bundle out of an air vent. Yeah, where you didn't have to be doing it. You just need an autopilot for you that you can activate. Yeah, or something like that. You need a big murder button. <laughs> like have Horny or whatever his name is from from. Or Dungeon it Keeper. would have been even. It would have been fine if they made it. If they they could have done like some one way system or something. Whereas like when the heroes walk past it this way, they're perfectly fine. When they walk this way, they get murdered by some traps. Or yeah, something. or a do- yeah, door closes behind them, and it's like, oh yeah, Indiana Jones traps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would have been better. Scarab room. I mean, maybe it does that later on in the game. It's hard to tell because like, the, the demo is not very much. Yeah, to yeah. It. There might be more mechanics opening up later. Yeah, on, possibly. It doesn't How look like it, it then? though. I don't know. It's some indie game, really. Okay. So you might as well consider it an indie game. It's cheapish. Okay. Do you think it'd be one of those things where, it'd be, even though the, the mechanics are a little bit tedious and stuff, I can't help but think that with these like dungeon games, and this was Overlord's sort of kind of. Um, raison d'être, <laughs> it was going for like a uh, comedy bonus. Yeah, well, it does definitely hinge on. But the trouble is, the comedy that it has in it is so incredibly derivative of Dungeon Keeper, it's almost exactly the same. Oh, where it's funny. like they're talking about... Chickens oh, and fart jokes. Where... Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. Um, maybe not. Tilts and unable to play marbles. No. But it's, it's like your, your helper guy or whatever, you know, your main minion guy. <laughs> My main minion. Old, an old, old goblin or whatever. Your old palerona. Yeah. yeah. He tell you, you know, he tell you what to do, but he's always talking about like the we're under the land of fluffy warbler or something, and we're going to make them scream. And it's exactly like it's the map thing. on Dungeon Keeper, where it's a, where it's like at the start of the round, it's like this is some nice place, and then at the end, it's like we totally bas- killed all those bastards. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's exactly that same sort of comedy version of yeah. Dungeon Keeper. Oh well, it's like holy shit, I played Dungeon Keeper. Oh wait. <laughs> Oh, well, a lot of people haven't played Dungeon Keeper. It's pretty old now. Well, they should play that and not Dungeons. <laughs> Dungeons yeah. is something rather different, and Dungeon Keeper is probably better. Okay, good. Right, how much time we got for your Fourth final game. review? Not enough time, probably. Just over ten minutes! Go for it, go for it. So the last one of this four epicness pack that I managed to demo was Shogun Total War 2. Two Total War. Total War Shogun 2. Yeah, As that's I... what it actually is. But, but, yeah. but Shogun 2 is a lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, Shogun! <laughs> so how's the demo? It's another Total War game, I as know. far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's That's like, insightful. Yeah. I, I, can you notice from the demo the fact that it's like more focused and polished and less expansive than like Empire? Maybe. I didn't really play Empire, so I don't know. I, last one I played was Rome. So I guess it's comparable. It's quite a lot like Rome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you get... Because the Rome demo just had, like, set battles. Do you get to use the strategic map in the demo? Of yeah, a bit. There's a few, there's like... Well, it basically... Te- you, don't, you don't really get to use it. You just follow the tutorial. You just get, it tells you you how get to, to do see it. it. Yeah. Right, okay. And, yeah, so it's, like, basically a Total War game. It's just, like, moving units around, and they fight each other, and they have counters or whatever, and 
guys stab each other. And... <laughs> Have they fixed that thing you were complaining about where the when they when they turn? No, this was one of the major things that really pissed me off about this. Right? Like, what that still exists from Rome? You yeah, mean? that still exists at this point, even though because you think, and when they're in a block. <laughs> And when you tell them to face a different direction, you think they should kind of snake around. Yeah, like they should. One they should manoeuvre rather than all getting in a jumble and then re- reassembling yeah. in the right place this later on. This is the problem on. I have with this. It's like I can't believe that still happens at this point. Yeah, it's like back in the Rome days, maybe it was excusable, but surely now we must. And it's. I mean, the whole game is meant to be about tactical manoeuvring or whatever. We'd well, almost think that Rome was, would, you know, just because of the setting, would be less excusable because they. Yeah, because like, Romans are even more disciplined. Yeah, when they were in yeah. a tortoise or whatever with the shield. The Romans. Yeah. Do you think they could? They did they have to break up but, and then reform? I can't remember how it oh, happened. In Rome. You need to anyway carry on. But yeah, so obviously they should have better controls for like keeping your formation or whatever. But it's like even worse than that when you've got a, like a unit selected and you want them to face another direction when you maneuver yeah. them. So you hold and drag or whatever. Yeah, you you right click and drag and it shows you like the formation and then you can stretch it out to be thinner or fatter. Yeah. So you've got more ranks, except it drags from the top left corner, which is really bad. <laughs> so if you've got, like, three units selected... Right. You have to click at the top left of the first unit, top left of the first unit, and drag out the other to the whole, to the width. So that's actually a really long drag. It's right. like a click and drag all the way across the width of all three of your units if you want them the same length. Mm. Right. And that's... Why the top left? It's like, if you think about... um What's it called? Ah, that goddamn world in conflict. Yeah, world in conflict. When you have a bunch of units in that, and you 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 click you click on the ground, and then you drag the direction you want them yeah. want them to face rather than parallel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To um, perpendicular to it, like yeah. in the Shogun. And the further you drag away from the point you clicked, makes them further apart. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Why yeah. not use that? <laughs> yeah, that that is better. <laughs> So, and then there's the traditional problem in, like, if you've got a whole bunch of units selected, I think there's a way, if you make a group of units, you can fit, you can pick, like, a set of select, uh, preset formations for them to be so in. So you can have the archers behind the infantry. <laughs> Except for some reason, none of them are archers behind. It's always archers in front. Because you're meant to always have your archers on skirmish, so they fire first, and then as the infantry advance, they, they retreat through you. Right. Which is really bad. Right, Because yeah. they just run into all your infantry and it all gets messed up and it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can't get them to divide into two you, and around You can't, like, have the infantry and the, uh, the rifleman, uh, sorry, rifleman? Archers. Uh, archers, like, spread themselves apart just enough so they sort of <laughs> just... Walk through, no. Yeah, so they just sort of, like, have a neat... They get, they get mangled up and stuck and all kind of... So that's really dumb. But it's like, so if you've made a group and you use one of these set formations, it's a set formation, and then you can drag that set formation out. But... If you've just got a bunch of units selected and you click and drag, it just puts them all in a long line. Totally useless. Why could I not have them be in the same formation they were in a minute ago when I click again? Oh, I see. You have to reset it every time. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't know. It's just That's like kind of bad. it wants you to do tactics, but it doesn't give you the fucking controls to be able to do tactics, or at least not I kind of tactical had that. tactics. Well, I kind of had that problem, and you know, I was I've always been shit at the total war games. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest, I've never got in got into them. Um, Mainly because the the sort of the, the initial hit of knowledge you need is enormous yeah. for those games, yeah. and one of the initial things I found was that whatever tactic I seemed to try, I couldn't. What I saw in my head <laughs> is this will be great. I'll do it like this. Yeah, um, I couldn't put into practice on the battlefield in any of the Total War games I've tried, which I'll be fair, isn't many of them. I think it, it's probably the original Shogun and Rome yeah. that I tried before just going off the idea. Yeah. In any of them, well, in those two, I couldn't get them to do what I wanted. And it's like, at that point, it's like, well, I actually don't know how to do what I wanted. There's no easy way for me to find out how to do what they wanted. And it's like, well, I've gone off this. Oh, sorry, you've, you've, you've instantly ruined the experience for lack of intuition. Or... And the In, other... or, or intuitiveness. <laughs> intuitiveness. Yes. Kind of the other thing that I found was, that was less annoying than the control issues but still kind of annoyed me about Shogun was your guys are constantly shouting shit in Japanese. It's like, that's yeah, just that's noise. Cool. It was just noise. It's not telling you anything. And they're always saying the same thing. And it's like, if I knew what they were saying, that might actually help me. <laughs> so does it ha- basically have the same effect as the engineer constantly taunting on Monday Night Combat? So it's just, it's, it's just a yeah, it's just uh-huh. an annoying noise in the background. Yeah, it's like because it, even in Rome, it's not like they spoke Latin. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but that would have been cool. 
<laughs> that would have been cool, but I mean, it still would have like, been annoying. I do like that they've gone completely... Are well, you sure they didn't? No, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Uh, I do I do like that they've gone, you know, they've, they've, they've rolled oh, no, with they the Japanese yeah. thing. They haven't just sort of just done it. They've, they've kept everything Japanese and they've <laughs> kept, you know, even the even the dialogues that pop up with their Japanese scroll style. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. It's a fairly nice, you know... It's a very polished interface. and Well, uh, not kinda. interface, but when you're in the strategic map anyway, it all looks nice. Oh, yeah, the strategic map is probably one of the cooler bits because it has like a ink drawn a map of the town and then as you move into it it's like the ground kind of comes out of the map as you discover oh we got like two minutes one and a half okay well Uh, we haven't even talked about the other thing that me and Zach have been playing these last couple of weeks which is Crystal Chronicles oh Oh, we said we were going to do it didn't we we'll get back to that next time we'll do it again I mean it can wait it's waited several years (laughs) that's true so you're not interested in getting Shogun 2 then no Okay. Basically, all four of these games just a complete bust in terms of me buying them. But well, I guess it's journalism. It's worth doing a bit of a play test of them anyway. Uh, just wait for Child of Eden, and then Portal you'll see two. my enthusiasm return. It's about time. Well, Portal Two, yeah, that'd be good. We've got only got what a week a and week a bit. bit. Yeah. yeah, so well, that might be in the next cast if we're <laughs> if we're lazy. Don't well, no, no, no. We'll do one just before Portal Two, and then the next one will be. <laughs> I don't think we will. <laughs> yeah. Well, Two, yeah, no, two weeks, yeah. So we'll, we'll have had some portal experience exactly. by next time. Yeah. Right, okay, awesome. Robots. Well, thanks for joining us once again on the Salad Cast. Um, uh, next week we'll have the end of Red Dead from Rob and uh, more certainly. Brotherhood from me and uh, various things from <laughs> Probably that. less Maybe things. some more uh, Shogun coverage. Assassin's uh, Creed, Bros in the Hood. If he thinks of anything <laughs> else. Okay. So, cheers, guys, and... Uh, 15 second outro. 15 second outro. <laughs> that was good. Coming up. We managed to fill the entire podcast with games. That was actually yeah. awesome. Yeah, a properly good one after some funny ones where we talked about Pokemon. <laughs> Four seconds. Bye to everyone. One Try second. Again. Let's take.